Well, hello everyone and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where today the Quincy Presidents will play host to the North Quincy Red Raiders in the 77th annual matchup between the two teams. My name is Jonathan Clary. I'm being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, it's always a great day here in the city of Quincy when these two teams get together. Yeah, you're right, John. And it's a great day for football today, folks. This nice cloud cover. The sun won't be a factor. It's about 50 degrees. It's a perfect day for high school football on Thanksgiving morning. Well, we're going to get right into things here in the QA TV pregame show. And I had an opportunity to interview Bill Reed and the coach of the Quincy High School Presidents the other day. And he had a few things to talk about Quincy High and what they need to do to win on Thanksgiving morning. So we'll take a look at that right now. We'll be joined here now by Bill Reardon, the head coach of Quincy High School. Hello, and Bill, thanks for joining us run. here today. We appreciate it. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me. Um, start off by talking a little about the general thoughts in the season so far. It hasn't been the best of season so far for Quincy High. Uh, yeah, we've had kind of an up and down season. I mean, we knew going in that we were, we had a lot of inexperienced younger guys, a heavier on the sophomore junior class. Um, we started the season with 13 seniors. So we knew that we had a lot of learning to do as we moved along. Um, and then we've had ups and downs with that learning. We've had some, we started off slow. We played a very good Cohasset team who was going to the playoffs. Um, Duxbury, Hingham, we played some tough opponents. And then we responded well against Pembroke. Um, and then we kind of slid down a little bit against Hanover, who was also another very good football team. So it, with a young team, that's the way it goes. You learn, you get better. You have for two steps forward, you take a step back type of thing. How's it compared to last year? I mean, last year you had a, you know, a good season, um, an experienced team. It makes coaching a little bit more difficult for you, a lot more coaching, if you will? Yeah, you do, you do more coaching in these situations. Last year we had, I want to say about 21 seniors, I think, 19 to 21 seniors, and they all had played the game before. They had varsity experience, so it was kind of like, well, let's just line them up and let them do their thing. Whereas this year with all the inexperience, you really got to walk them through the fundamentals one and two, three times to get them, got to coach them up. Now, speaking of the seniors, talk about this year's seniors and how they've had an impact on the team. Yep, this year's seniors put some great leadership out of our four captains, James Nguyen, Kenny Nguyen, Ngozi Aguguo, and Lance Peterson. And Lance has had three years of varsity experience at the quarterback position. So we've really leaned on those guys to help guide us through the tough times. And to their credit, they've helped us do that. Now, do you talk about any experience on this team, but at quarterback, you've had a lot of experience. How does that help you as a coach, knowing that your quarterback has seen a lot of issues before, a lot of plays and defensive looks and whatnot? Yeah, it's been very good for us because, especially with the inexperience of the offensive line, um, we've, had, we've gone through several different faces. In the first five games of the season, we didn't start the same five kids at offensive line. So with an inexperienced quarterback in there, it could have been disastrous for his psyche. But because Lance has been there so for two years and he's confident in his ability, he knows what he can do, he handled that very well. And instead of just you know, getting aggravated and taking it out on the guys, he really showed a lot of maturity and patience and helped them gain experience and mature through that. Now, how does that help you as a second year head coach? I mean, knowing that your quarterback, you don't have to tell him a lot of different things. So you can concentrate on offensive line and other players around that as well. Yeah, that's a luxury that, that I've had. He's, he's very smart with the game of football. He knows, like, we'll be looking at the coverages in the press box, and he'll come off, and he'll, before I can get it out of my mouth, he'll tell me, Coach, they're in cover three here. I think we should run this. And I'm like, well, that's what they just told me upstairs. <laughs> so it is a nice luxury to have. Now, speaking of, I said this is your second year as head coach. How has it been different from your first year, and what have you learned compared to last year and going on to this year? Well, I've certainly learned that every, every year is different, every team's different. Um, with, with each new senior class, seems to be a brand new personality. Um, where kids are as juniors, you've you got to almost start new again where they are as, as seniors and see, well, is this person ready to take on this new role and that new role, and if not, we got to figure out a way to get back to the old role somehow. Um, so it's, that's been a learning experience for me. Um, this is your uh, first year in the Patriot League Fisher Division. Last year you were in the Patriot League Keenan Division. The year before that you were in the Atlantic Coast League. So three basically conferences in three years. How does that affect you as a coach planning for different teams, whereas before you were in the Atlantic Coast League for a number of years and O'Connor League before that for a number of years, so you knew you were going to be seeing the same teams year in, year out? Yeah, it's difficult at first when you're playing a team that you haven't played before because you... With teams you have played the last couple of years, you know the coaching staff, you have an idea of their tendencies, what they like to do in certain situations. So that was difficult at first. Um, we were fortunate enough to keep a lot of 
a couple of those teams as non-league games, like Plymouth South, for instance, even though we're not in the same league mm -hmm. now, but we've played them because we've kept them as a non-league opponent, so that's helped. Um, within the Patriot League, there is some crossover games you play, so there is some familiarity with that. So it hasn't been too bad. I, I mean, I do know, though, that the one thing of the change that we've really enjoyed is not having to drive to the Cape anymore. I mean, that, that must be a huge <laughs> thing because, you know, be, before you having to drive down to Nauset or Falmouth, mm -hmm. before that Barnstable, I mean, yeah. it, it certainly takes a toll. I mean, now you, your closest game is a lot closer than it was before. I mean, before your closest game was, you know, Plymouth. Yeah. Now it's a lot closer than that, so that must help the team a lot, too. Oh, it's, it's tremendous. It really is. Um, you're talking about your um, non-league opponents. You played uh, Plymouth South, Cohasset. Um, how does that help the, with the league schedule? Like you said, Cohasset's a very good team. Plymouth South are a decent team as well this year. Um, must must help when you get into your league schedule. Yeah, I, I think it did because we played. Welcome back, everyone, to the QATV pregame show. I'm being joined now by Frank Santorin, the principal of Quincy High School. Frank, happy Thanksgiving. Good morning, Jonathan. Nice to be here. Um, talk about the environment at Quincy High the past week. I'm sure it's been very exciting around the high school. Yes, this time of year is always an exciting time of year. Uh, we have our spirit week tied into our homecoming festivities, and uh, it just builds and builds as the week goes on until Blue and White Day, which happened to be yesterday. We're a little hampered by the weather. We don't have a gymnasium, as uh, you know, because of the construction, but... Um, we were trying to close Coddington Street to do our rally on the front steps, but uh, weren't able to do it because of the rain. But we did do two indoor uh, assemblies in our auditorium, and things are, worked out quite well, depending, uh, without, without all the aggravation that came along with the weather. Real quick, talk about the production of the high school and how it's going. We're uh, due to move in next September. Things are going uh, quite well. The uh, gym and the uh, auditorium are ahead of schedule. We thought we'd be uh, without those until December, but they'll be ready as well at the end of September. And uh, we expect to move into a brand new 330,000-square-foot uh, technology smart uh, high school. Excellent. Have you had an opportunity to talk to the team today? And if you did, what have you said to them? Actually, I talked to them last night. Okay. Uh, annually, we have our pre-game dinner. And uh, what uh, I told the boys uh, at the beginning of the season was to do two things for me. One was to be good role models for the younger youth. And the second was to uh, think of Quincy High School football as a family. And they've done that. And to me, their uh, win-loss record, to me, is an undefeated season at this point because they've accomplished those two things. And I see them going into this game undefeated <laughs> more than uh, the record shows. Quickly, talk about uh, Coach Bill Reardon and what he's done for the high school and the, and the team as well. Yeah, Bill Reardon is uh, an exceptional person. Uh, many people know Bill as a result of his football knowledge and uh, being able to coach uh, young men into adulthood. But we also appreciate Bill at the high school because of his role as a guidance counselor. Not only does he fulfill that obligation, which is to our football team, he fulfills that uh, with many youth in our high school. Well, Frank, we want to appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule here this morning and joining us on the pregame show. Uh, and again, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you to QATV. On behalf of the Quincy High School family, I wish you all a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Well, at this time, now we're going to go to an interview I had an opportunity the other day with Coach Jim Connor, the coach of the North Quincy High School Football Raiders. Let's take a look at that. We're being joined now by Coach Jim Connor of the North Quincy Red Raiders. Coach, thanks for joining us and uh, taking some time out of your schedule. Yeah, hey, no problem at all. I'm sure it's busy this week, and it's one of the busiest weeks of the year. Um, talk about the season so far for the Red Raiders and um, how you feel the season's going. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's been it's been relatively up and down uh, the last few weeks. And uh, we started off strong, and then we had a tough spell. And then we had a uh, beat Whitman Hansen, a comeback victory with a minute to go in the game, and really kind of was an uplifting time for, this, for the kids in the season. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and one of those great wins to have going into the Thanksgiving Day game. So it's one of those th things where, you know, uh, we have the ability to be an amazing football team and we also have the ability to, to beat ourselves a little bit. And uh, I think, you know, that you know, having a week off before the game really gives us a chance to kind of, um, you know, uh, get those mistakes, you know, knocked out a little bit and then we can clean it up a little bit. How's it been for the team, kind of those up and down slides, if you was? Has it been tough on the kids going up and down like that? Yeah, it's always tough on the kids, and it's always tough on uh, the staff, and it's tough on everybody, you know. You get these, uh, you know, you go through times where your, your team looks great, and, you know, great confidence going in next week, and then things just don't work out, and uh, and you hit a point where, you know, how do you get, how do you get the team and everybody, the whole program back thinking positively again and, and, uh, and excited about the following week? 
Talk about the captains and how they've helped you in that sense and the seniors as well. Yeah, I mean, they've been outstanding. And, you know, that's who you look to in these times. When times are great, you look to uh, have the captains and seniors bring them back down to, uh, you know, to ground level. And when times are bad, you got to look to them to bring them back up again. So they've been doing a great job. And, and you can definitely tell by the way, you know, when we hit a stretch of, I think it was, you know, six consecutive losses. And then we play Whitman Hanson, who was an outstanding football team at six and two, and we come back from behind and win just to show show you that they are just not giving up and will fight right to the end. Talk about your captains um, almost individually and how they really help the team and um, bring along the younger players. Yeah, we have some great captains. Uh, quarterback Mike Stanton is a uh, you know Division One prospect and uh, he's been doing having, having a great year and uh, great senior leadership. And uh, we have two very good linemen, uh, Mike Benoit, AJ Morphy, um, returning uh, starters playing O line and D line for us. And uh, and tight end linebacker Brian Donahue and and uh, was just you know another great leader and and uh, thousand yard rushing Terrence Staley fullback and uh, and playing some strong safety and linebacker had all five of them had a great year great season and a great career here at North Quincy. Uh, talk about the uh, the league that you're playing uh, the Patriot League moving into the Keenan Division now this year has that been as a, a uh, tough of the team or I mean it is a tougher division that's I mean I don't think anyone will disagree with that and you know so you're playing uh, teams like Kingham and Duxbury and Silver Lake and Situate and you know you don't really get a break um, <clears throat> with that with that schedule but uh, you know I, I think you know no matter who what league you're in or who you're playing you know you take one week at a time and you take each team individually and they're still still high school kids and still all the same age and you know watch the same stuff you watch and you know there's nothing you know special going down there but it's really off season preparation that that we need to work on i think that um you know that uh you know the program has to get better at and, and you know to try to compete with those the big schools in the division talk about um the non-league schedule uh, you played in Malden, another division one school um talk about the non-league schedule and how they got you ready for the patriot league schedule yeah uh, Malden was a uh, tough team real you know big fast and tough team and uh and i think kind of um you know took us back a little bit because they struggled a little bit last year but um but you know, definitely gave us a little bit of a wake-up call to the competition we're going to be facing this year. Um, and we had Boston Latin away was another game that we didn't know what we were, you know, like uh, what kind of team they were. We played, came out and did what we, uh, you know, can do. We won 33 to seven, you know, in that kind of game. And then we played Sharon home and uh, and Plymouth South. And so I think we have a really good non-league um, schedule with you know competitive um, and really uh, and challenging going into our league play. All right, we're here Thanksgiving week. Um, how you done? What have you? What have you done to uh, get the kids focused and stay ready for this game? And uh, there's a lot of extracurricular things that are going on this week. Right. I mean, there are a ton of them, and it's, it seems like there's two a day. And uh, you know, you just got to keep keep uh, repeating yourself, and you know, you got to almost brainwash them that you know, it's getting into the state, you know, the, the points where you need to stay focused. Um, and you know, every practice we got to practice like we're trying to win, and not just trying to get through to get to another thing that could distract us. We got a most important thing is winning on Thursday. And, uh, and from that point on, you know, we'll let the chips fall where they may with all the other commitments that we have to do prior to. You talk about winning on Thursday. What does North Quincy need to do to beat Quincy on Thursday? I think, uh, you know, North Quincy especially, and I think even both teams, you know, we can't beat, beat ourselves. And North Quincy cannot turn the ball over, can't give up big plays. And that's the key. If we can do that, and we'll, we, should be in, we should be okay and be in good hands. I think uh, where we tend to have problems is when we lose the turnover battle, and, uh, which I know is not anything new. With uh, most teams, you got to win the turnover battle, and we're, we're no exception. Um, but when we've lost games, we uh, we've turned the ball over and we hurt ourselves, and that's the key. We got to make sure we just execute to our to its fullest, and uh, and we've been had two weeks to work on it. So hopefully, we can get it done. Well, uh, good luck on Thursday, and uh, hopefully, North Quincy will come out a win. But a good game is what we're looking for here in the city of Quincy. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Back down here on the field with the principal of North Quincy High School, Earl Metzler. Earl, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. Thanks for taking some time out of your uh, busy day here. Um, talk about what happened at North Quincy High School the past week, getting ready for the game, and the, uh, I assume the excitement that was building up. Well, first, first I'd like to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving on behalf of the North Quincy family. It's certainly a time to be thankful, and uh, we should certainly be thankful at both schools. We have two absolute fantastic student athlete coaches there, absolute gentlemen, class acts on both sides so we should be thankful because it, we're really really fortunate to have uh, both Bill Ridden and Jim Connor leading these programs they're just two great guys and so we're thankful for them uh, the, the week leading up we've um, you know we, we ran out of all our, our red and black clothes I think you know <laughs> so uh, no blue at North Quincy High during the week and uh, just an absolute fantastic um, rally to cap it all off yesterday afternoon uh, where we celebrate just about all of our fall sports and then with a little focus on football so it was just a really exciting week 
Talk about Coach Jim Conner and what he's done for the football team and his presence at the high school as well, a little bit more. Well, you know, what Jim Conner brings, um, obviously he brings tremendous uh, football knowledge and background, but, but more importantly what he brings is a, is a presence in the classroom. He's just an absolute fantastic teacher, um, just a great role model, and just a, just a class act as a, a gentleman, you know, as it, as it sums it up with one word. Uh, quickly talk about, um, well, what are you going to say to the kids? I know you said you're going to go and talk to them momentarily. Uh, a little preview of what you might be talking to them about. Well, in, in, when we get a chance to address the kids, it, it's really important for them to understand um, the importance of the tradition, the pride, and the excellence at North Quincy High School. And I, I would ask them, uh, you know, to represent the school in a way uh, that uh, they'll be seen as, as nothing but class. And certainly, if they are successful, I'd ask them to, to act like they've been there before. And I know mm -hmm. it's been a while, but I'd ask them to please act like you've been there before. Well, we appreciate you taking some time out. Again, a busy schedule. I know you have to get going. So uh, happy Thanksgiving. And again, uh, thanks for coming on the show. Happy we appreciate it. As well. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, we're going to take a moment here. Uh, oh, we're going to take a picture here on the sidelines here. Excellent. And uh, a little unexpected, but that's okay. And I think we're going to be joined now uh, by the great mayor of our city of Quincy, Mayor Tom Koch. And we're going to bring the mayor on now. Mayor, happy Thanksgiving. Same to you, Jonathan. Thank Good you morning. for joining us here. Um, a busy day here in the city of Quincy. I'm sure you have a lot going on here today. A lot happening, but this is certainly a big part of the Thanksgiving day, the, the game. Uh, I've been coming since I was a child and wouldn't miss. Gorgeous day for it, not too cold, no rain, uh, no excuse for people not to come down and enjoy. <laughs> I'll say it is a great crowd, and if people are listening out there on QA TV, still plenty of time to come on down and uh, be a part of the game here today. Um, this is the 77th time these two teams have played. Talk about the tradition uh, of, the, of the game in the, the city of Quincy. Well, certainly the, the game itself is a great tradition for both high schools. And certainly, uh, you know, I was an 81 graduate of North Quincy High, and uh, you certainly look forward to it. It brought the schools together. Uh, tremendous amount of spirit and rallied around for the for the day, but it's it's certainly a lot more than that. Uh, you know, when you Thanksgiving itself is just such a wonderful, wonderful holiday, and it's certainly one of my favorites. And the game fits into that because so many people come to the game to really uh, reunite with a number of folks uh, they haven't seen since last year and uh, shoot the breeze, uh, share some stories, and enjoy the game. So it's a great you know sport tradition, but it's also a great tradition for families to enjoy the Thanksgiving Day, giving thanks for. For all we truly all the blessings we have, and certainly some of those are the people that uh, the gift of each other, and and mm -hmm. uh, be able to share those stories and memories uh, as we come back each year. I think is a wonderful thing and a wonderful tradition in our city. We should also talk about it's a busy weekend here in the city of Quincy. Talk about some of the events that are going to be going on uh, to kick off the holiday season. Yes, it is a great weekend. Uh, those who grew up in Quincy know it quite well. They have it in the calendar, you know, Thanksgiving game, football game, but then you're turning on the lights, the Christmas lights, Friday night, and the. Santa jump on Saturday and of course on Sunday the the big Christmas parade which I think everybody is uh, has a sketched in the calendar all year long they know it's coming up and certainly it looks like a good day I think Sunday I haven't looked at the long range on Sunday but uh, that's another great tradition families just come back and come back to their parents home and enjoy the day enjoy the parade and congratulate the committee they do a great job um, I don't know 20 some odd bands and 15 or 18 floats so many specialty units so another great tradition that really makes this weekend very special, very unique, I think, in this region of the country. Well, we appreciate you taking some time out of your schedule here today. A lot going on, and uh, we'll let you go take your seat up in, uh, in the stadium and uh, cheer on both teams, I think, today, right? Absolutely. <laughs> my my uh, youngster, Tom Jr., has a little Yaku pin on, but I, uh, I am not picking sides today. I wish both teams well, and I'm sure they'll make us proud. And happy Thanksgiving to all the folks of Quincy. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Happy Thanksgiving, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate uh, the mayor coming on, taking some time out of schedule here. And uh, I think we're going to get Jim Timmons back into the picture momentarily. Uh, again, if you are listening at home, uh, we had to cut off the interview with Coach Bill Reard in a little bit short. You'll be able to go on to the website, qatv.org, and beginning on Monday morning, you'll be able to see that interview in its entirety. Uh, so you can see all what Bill Reardon had to say. We apologize for cutting it out. A lot going on here today at the pregame show. And as I'm being joined now, back again with Jim Timmons. Jim, uh, talking a little bit about the game now. Both teams come into this record uh, game with a record of 2-7 for Quincy High, 3-7 and seven for North. Uh, this is kind of their Super Bowl game, if you will, this year. Yeah, th that's the case every year, but in a season like this we have a rough record. Um, it's all the more so true. Um, both teams are trying to achieve their vindication and make the season worth something. Uh, that's what this game's about today. As I said early on, it's really perfect football weather. Um, potentially at least favorable to North Quincy because I think they have the edge in the passing game. 
Um, this is perfect weather for Mike Stanton. Uh, it's not windy at all. The sun is not going to be a factor, which helps the receivers. You may recall last year uh, the famous punt that was fumbled um, down this end of the stadium, the north end of the stadium. So weather can be a factor, but the sun won't be today. The wind won't be today. So I think that helps North, John, coming into the game. Coach Bill Reardon said at the end of his interview that um, in order for Quincy High to win this game, they do need to stop Mike Stanton and also make sure that Terrence Staley doesn't have a big game. Talk a little bit about that. Those are kind of the two big guns for North Quincy High School, and if they get going, it could be tough for the Presidents. Yeah, you're correct about that, and the Staley factor is very interesting. Uh, Terrence, the beginning of the year, came out like a house of fire. He had two 200-yard games. He uh, scored touchdowns and the key with Terrence was he showed strength inside and speed outside. Um, we didn't see that frankly the rest of the year. I'm not sure quite what happened um, but Terrence uh, although he was a little bit mystifying um, we're looking to see what happens today. Uh, I know that the coach would love to see him produce and um, is hoping, Coach Connor that is, is hoping that um, they can get some production out of Terrence. And it might be the case that the air game for North will open that up. Uh, Terrence has played both ways. That's another factor. And one final thing. Uh, we covered a lot of Friday night games. North in particular played a lot of Friday night games. And as the academic year wears on and the football season wears on, Friday night's the time when you're most fatigued. Well, today all the boys are energized. It's a, it's a morning game, and um, I think that the fatigue may not be the factor that it has been uh, during the course of the season. So we're excited to see what Terrence has to do today. All right, we're going to be joined now by the uh, superintendent of the Quincy Public Schools, Dr. Richard DeCristofaro. Happy Thanksgiving. Good morning, Happy Thanksgiving. Doctor. Happy Thanksgiving. How are you doing? Great. Terrific to be here. Yeah, you've been roaming around the field today. We had a little trouble corralling you. You've been so busy. Thanks for coming over. What do you think? Well, I think it's a great day, first of all, you know, and, and uh, you know, I look forward to this day every year. Uh, and uh, it's, it's really about celebrations, you know, mm -hmm. in the school system and in the city. And I think it's one day, actually, even though we're blue and white or black and red, um, the city's won, and, and I think the message is loud and clear that we uh, have a wonderful city and a great school system. Right, as uh, that Business Week article said, you know, it's a great place to raise a family, and the school system's a major part of that. Uh, one other thing, uh, Coach Connor, Coach Reardon, there aren't two better guys in the state as far as coaches. Uh, they're both in their own building. They're involved in the system. Can you talk a little bit about that, what it is like to have two young, vibrant, you know, great people involved in these programs. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I, I really believe, you know, they, they know, first of all, they know uh, so much more about football than I ever will, uh, but they're both, as you say, they're both young and they're both committed to our to our kids. And uh, those kids come for, uh, first, absolutely come first. And uh, both both of were talented football players in their own right, but they're role models. And that's really what we look for. And we're pleased, very pleased that we have them with us. Yeah, we're very lucky that they're leading the two teams. going to be very interesting. Um, I appreciate you taking time to stop Anytime. by. I know it's a busy morning. All right, Anytime. so happy Thank Thanksgiving. Much. And All right. your family, too. Thank you. Right. Take care. All right, care. All right Bye -bye. doctor. We're going to cut away, I believe, now. We've been getting signals from the sideline, <laughs> so I think uh, John and I are going to go to the safe enclave of our booth. We're going to break down the sideline stuff, and uh, we'll be back with game coverage in a few minutes. Yeah, we actually have a highlight tape, Jim, of some of the plays from the season. Uh, so like Jim said, if you're listening at home, stay tuned for some highlight tapes, and Jim and I will be back in a moment with kickoff here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Let's go to the and Morrison back receive the deep kick. And he's going to go over and field it at the 25-yard line. Let's back up inside. Has some green space ahead of him. Breaks the tackle. Goes it out to the 40. Has a couple blockers in front of him. Cuts back up inside. Up now to the 20. 15. And finally gets brought down now at the 13-yard line. Great run by Paul Reamer. Morrison to the left. Reamer to the right. Back to pass to Stan. Checks off. Goes into the end zone for Reamer. And it is touchdown. Great catch there by Paul Reamer. A 14-yard touchdown pass, and North gets on the board. Guys, we got a pitch now to the season. Got the first down and more across the 40-yard line, and more as that goal and just nice gets tackled job. there. It's a first to goal for the five. Newsom with the ball over to the left side, and touchdown, Presidents. Something to about there. Here comes Stan rolling. 
coming up. And Stan's going to try to avoid it, and he pitches up to Staley. He catches it, uh -oh. and they pick up the first down. Great improv there by Mike Stanton. Makes it back to pass, trying to set up the screen, and they can't. Oh, he's pretty tackle. And finally gets brought down by North Quincy. And it goes over to the left side now, and great job there by Quincy High. Found Red Raiders, and here they come first to chat. He hits Reamer wide open, and this could go. It does. Great job by the Red Raiders. A loss of four on the play. Peterson back to pass. Looking downfield for Google again. And nice oh, catch by Google. Big play. Peterson back to pass. Look at the end zone. Has Google wide open. And touchdown, Quincy High. Great job there. Nosey Google ran a great route, faked out his man, and Peterson found him in the corner of the end zone for a 14 yard touchdown pass. Yeah, but no, no one can call him there. The two the tackles, they've been moving back and forth during the game. It's picked off now by North Quincy. Kyle McKay has some room to go down to space, and he's going to go all the way, Jim, for the touchdown. Oh, what a play! Look at McKay go! Two weeks in a row, John. Willie Jr., Kyle McKay. The play, because Red Raiders have talent, John, but we saw a little kind of lag and focus. Here we go, oh. Terrence Daly. Crossing it down to the 40, has one man to beat. And deeps him out, oh, he's gonna go, a Jim. Move. What a move by Staley, and he's gonna go all the way. Touchdown, wow. Terrence Staley. A 91 yard that. touchdown run by Staley. Welcome back everyone to Veterans Memorial Stadium. You can see down the field, the coin toss is getting ready to be taking place. I think we're gonna go down to the field for the coin toss right now. North Quincy has won the toss, elected to defer to the second North half. Quincy has won the toss, but will defer and kick off. Quincy will be receiving in the south goal. Shake hands, guys. Let's have a fantastic game tonight. Good luck. Great job there by Quincy High. And keeps him out. Oh, he's going to go, Jim. And touchdown, Presidents. Well, hello everyone and welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium where today the 77th edition of Thanksgiving football will take place here in the city of Quincy where the Quincy Presidents will play host to the North Quincy Red Raiders. Right now both teams are out on the field. The coin toss has already taken place. North won the toss and decided to defer to the second half. They will defend the north end zone. Quincy will defend the south end zone. We're going to take a pause now and get ready for our national anthem performed by the Quincy North Quincy Combined Marching Band. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, would you please rise and remove your hats for our national anthem. Today's anthem will be played by the combined Quincy and North Quincy marching band under the direction of Mr. Richard Trudeau.
rendition of our national anthem performed by the Quincy North Quincy Marching Band. And a lot of festivities here today, Jim, at the stadium where uh, a lot of people are coming back for reunions, coming back for uh, a lot of different things here in the city of Quincy. It's just a lot of people here at the stadium. It's a, one of the best days here in the city of Quincy each year. Yeah, you're right about that, Sean. I understand that we're ready for our QATV game day weather report. Why don't we get that up? Um, as I had mentioned, it's, the temperature is perfect. Um, it's a little humid, so it feels warmer than that 49 degrees being reported. Uh, there's a nice cloud cover, which is going to take the sun out completely as a factor. And yet, you know, it's very comfortable here. The wind right now out of the southeast at three miles per hour. So that means basically uh, that the wind is not a factor. The wind is going to be blowing to whatever extent it does blow across the field from the north side across to the Quincy side. So shouldn't impact play at all. Interesting decision by Coach Connor, John, and a reflection of what North Quincy's thinking coming into the game. They won the kick, and rather than take the ball offensively, Coach Connor's going to turn the early part of the game over to the defense. They've been terrific with special teams all year, North Quincy has. So Coach Connor looking to try to get a field posi position edge early on. A little right, squib kick. Yeah, squib kick is fielded by Quincy at their own 37-yard line. Fielded by number 10, Kevin Rhodes. And he's going to get about to the 42-yard line, the president's moving from right to left, if you're listening at home, defending the south end zone. Quincy's led by their senior quarterback, Jim Lance Peterson, one of the captains of the team. Also, the other captains for this team are Kenny Nguyen, Nozi Aguguo, and James Nguyen. Yeah, we love Lance Peterson. The two quarterbacks playing today are two of the better ones who have come through the system, Peterson and Stanton. Lance, a great leader. We'll see what he's got in store for the Presidents and the Red Raiders today. All right, ball spot at the 41-yard line. They're going to pitch it now over to number three, Reggie Caesar. He goes over to the left side, but will get no gain on that play. Yeah, Caesar is a premier running back. Reggie is only a sophomore. He was named All-League this year uh, by the coaches in the Patriot League. And... Um, you know, that's quite an honor for a sophomore. And he's a key player today, John. The last two Thanksgiving Day games have been decided by outstanding performances, Quincy's running game. So that's where Coach Reardon is starting out today. Second down and 10 for the present. Pitch goes to Caesar again over to the right side now. He's going to cross over the 50-yard line and finally get knocked out of bounds at the 49. But the presidents appear to have enough for the first down. They're right at the marker, Jim. We'll see where they spot it. And actually, they're going to say no. He's just shy. So it'll be third down and short for the presidents. Simple little toss sweep there. Coach Redden set up three receivers to the right. And then they all ran slant patterns across the field to take the uh, North Quincy defense in the other direction. Caesar took the pitch. And with his excellent speed, he was able to get outside. As you said, he had a nice pickup there, just short of a first down. Uh, he's short by about, I'd say, a foot or so. So third down here for the Presidents. Offset eye formation for the Presidents. Peterson under center. He's going to keep it himself. And it looks like with the forward progress, they will have the first down. Yeah, watching the uh, line judge come out, uh, he's the man who spots the ball. He spotted it just past the... Uh, 48 yard line and uh, that was enough for first down they had to cross the 49 they got just short of the 48 so first down presidents are in red raider territory john and nice. uh the clocks moved down to about nine minutes here it was a good late push there by the offensive line initially it looked like he didn't have it but then they got an extra push and peterson was able to get across and i just say to just about the 48 yard line in north quincy territory first down and 10 for the presidents Pitch this time goes to Ron Newsom over to the left side, and he has nowhere to go. And he's going to lose three yards in his play, Jim. Goes all the way back to his own 48. Nice job by the Red Raider defense of stringing that one out. They were uh, successful in stopping that little toss. As I said, Sean, the Quincy success on Thanksgiving Day has 
uh, basically evolved from their running game. So Coach Reardon starting out, it's all on the ground, trying to attack North. They were mostly right-handed in that first series. Uh, they're coming in, tried the left side there without success. They're over here on the left hash mark now. A lot of room on the right side of the field. Second down and 14. Hainuff goes to DJ Neal. He's going to go over the right side, and he's going to get it back into North Quincy territory, up to the 49-yard line. Bring up now a third down and long for the Presidents, though, third and 11. Yeah, nice job by the Red Raider linebackers here stuffing that hole. So the North defense, they're the guys that, uh, as I said, Coach Kahn is putting the early part of the game in their hands. I had said a couple of weeks ago, we're going to know a lot about what's going to happen here uh, Thanksgiving Day. If North Quincy can get out to a fast start, that's going to be critical if North's going to be successful today. Two receivers to the right of Peterson, and they're going to run the ball over to Caesar, over to the right side. He breaks one tackle, but cannot break the second. Coming up and finishing him off was Trevor Richardson, number 84 for the Raiders, and the Presidents will be forced to punt. Yeah, the other guy in on the play was uh, number 44, Brian Donahue. He was all fired up. He made the initial hit, wrapped him up. Great pursuit. So it's going to be fourth down and nine. Uh, Quincy will be punting here. And uh, North Quincy sends Mike Curran back and uh, Mike Morrison. Two guys who have been very dependable. Curran, a junior. Morrison, a junior. They've been dependable all year for the Red Raiders. Luke McDonough will be doing the kicking now for the Presidents. Great snap. And gets a good kickoff as well. Morrison's going to field at his own 20-yard line. Great coverage by the Presidents. He gets away from that coverage, though. He goes across the other side of the field. And bringing, up, bringing him down, excuse me, is James Newing, one of the captains for the Presidents. But Morrison will get up to his own 34-yard line, 14-yard return. Yeah, great job by Morrison. As you said, John, there was uh, perfect coverage by the Presidents. They were right down there. And if you watch this replay, Morrison, first of all, he's going to field the punt very cleanly, which was great. But look at that. He did a super job of evading goes he a Gugwo, and not too many guys have done that this year. Nice move by Mars, and he turned it up inside. One thing we saw was that Kyle McKay blocking on the play, got his leg dinged up there. Kyle's been a big contributor for North, so we'll hope he's okay. Mike Stanton, the quarterback, hands the ball off now to Shea Aduzian. Over to the right side, he's gonna get up to the 42 yard line. Nice game for the Red Raiders on first down. Yeah, they're going to give him about seven there. Nice little counter play. Good blocking by the Red Raider line. Adusian with a gain of seven. And uh, Red Raiders are out across the 42. So first decision by Coach Connor to defer looks to be a good one here as the Red Raiders have very solid field position. They're feeling pretty good about themselves early on here, John. Second down and about two and a half yards now for the Raiders. Stan hands it off to Staley over to the right side and cuts back up in the middle. And he'll move the chains for the Raiders. Gets across the 45 and first down, North Quincy. Again, nice job by the Red Raider line. They got right out there. They blocked very effectively. Uh, Staley's a guy we talked before the game. He can run inside and he can run outside. That time he was just inside his left tackle. Round out a first down. So. Red Raiders, as did the Presidents, pick up a first down in their first possession. Enough goes to Aduzian over the right side. He's going to get a gain of one, maybe two on the play before he's brought down there. Tom Paluzzi with a tackle for the Presidents. Presidents did a nice job of turning that run back inside there, John. Aduzian tried to make a little move and uh, his leg slipped. Uh, the field is not what I would call wet, but it's early enough and with the humid conditions, going to be a little slippery there uh, as far as running backs making quick cuts early on. Second down and nine now for North Quincy. Ball at their own 42 yard line. Mike Stanton under center and off to Staley. Cuts back up inside and he crosses into President's territory up to the 49 yard line. That was a nice cutback by Staley. The play was originally designed to go outside the tackle. There was nothing there. Staley cut it back up inside, and uh, he picked up 
about five yards with some gritty running inside. So a nice job. President defense stiffening here. It's gonna be a third and five. The guy we like to talk about and expect to talk about when you talk on the president defense is James Nguyen, number 36. That guy is everywhere. He's the leader of this defense. He's out there signaling now to all the guys, and uh, he's been in on some key stops early on. Bump ball on the play. It looks like Quincy might have recovered, Jim. Handoff went to Terrence Staley. Didn't control it, and Quincy has recovered the fumble. Well, that play, uh, that somewhat failed due to the design of the play. It was a quick toss to Staley. He was catching the ball right up near the line, and as a result, he took his eyes off the ball. If you watch this replay, you'll see what I mean. He's taking a little toss, and he's up near the line. You see the penetration there. The guy who made that play happen, you see him down there on the ball now, number 58 for Quincy, with great penetration, Akeem Haywood. Haywood is the guy who distracted um, Staley, forced the fumble, and the presidents take over with great field position at the 48-yard line, John. First down and 10, Quincy High, offset eye formation behind Lance Peterson. They're gonna pitch it to Caesar over to the right side. He finds a seam, gets across the 40, and up now to about the 38-yard line, right at the first down marker. Nice cut back by Caesar there. The same play that they ran before where Caesar went outside. Well, that time he saw a seam inside. He cut it back up. If you watch this replay real quickly, um, he's going to cut it back up here instead of going outside. Nice gain by Caesar. Red Raiders with a second and a short one. Uh, President's rather, second short one. Pitch to Caesar over to the left side. Now he's got the first down and more across the 30 yard line. Cuts back outside up to the 20 and finally knocked out of bounds there by Paul Reamer. But a big run there by Reggie Caesar. Another first down and into the red zone of North Quincy High. There's been some great blocking by the presidents at the point of attack. In particular, again, Akeem Haywood, the guy who uh, the guy who forced the fumble there. Um, Akeem is he's got some issue. I'm not sure what the problem is, but he made a nice block getting outside there to free up Caesar. 23-yard gain there by Reggie Caesar. Ball now at the 15-yard line, North Quincy High. First down, 10 presents. And of course, DJ Nail balls on the ground, and North Quincy has recovered. DJ Nail got the ball, went up into the middle, and got hit from both sides. One of those men was able to strip the ball away, and North Quincy recovers. Yeah, the guy who got the strip was Trevor Richardson. And you watch, uh, yeah, we'll watch the replay here. Real quickly, watch Richardson, 84. He's gonna get his hand in there and strip it. Ball comes loose, covered by an alert, Tommy Petiti, one of the guys we've talked about a lot this season. So Petiti picked up the ball, and uh, Red Raiders are gonna start now. First and 10 from their 15. One of the things Coach Reardon talked about, John, was the um, turnovers. He was very concerned about it, and that's a big turnover here early in the game for the Presidents. All right, ball at the North Quincy 15-yard line. Shea Aduzian with a carry, gets across the 20, and up now to the 23-yard line. Nice gain there by Aduzian, gain of eight on first down. Both teams are trying to establish themselves at the line. Um, they're really firing off, uh, the linemen are that is, and what's gonna happen is conditioning is gonna be a big factor in this game, John. Both coaches sticking to the ground game, banging away here, and we're gonna see at the end of the first half, and then probably mid to late third quarter, which team is in better condition, uh, because these guys are really banging away at each other early on. Second down and two, North Quincy moving left to right. And Mike Stanley gets sacked there coming in for Quincy High School. It was Ron Newsom and a big loss there, but a big play for Quincy High School to sack Stanton. Yeah, Stanton never saw Newsom. And uh, Newsom came from his blind side. 
And as you said, big play by the president defense. It's going to uh, set the Red Raiders back at their 17-yard line. They've got to get it out to the 26. It's going to be a third and eight. They were looking at the uh, wide out there, Paul Reamer, number 21, on that play. Stanton looking to pass, looks downfield, and it is picked off there. No, he's not. Nosey Agugo laid out for that pass, looked like he had it, but they're going to say the ball hit the ground. Great effort there by Agugo. We have now a fourth down for North Quincy. Well, both squads are sputtering a little bit early here, John. Um, Coach Connor's initial attempt to establish field position hasn't worked. Presidents have the better field position, they've had the field position at year. Now it's up to the Red Raiders special teams. Got a flag here. Looks like the Presidents had too many men on the field. And uh, that gentleman gets off now. So. We're down to the field for the official call. We have illegal substitution, 12 men on the field. Still fourth down. So it'll be a five yard penalty against the presidents, but as you heard, it still remains fourth down. Yeah, that won't influence whether the Red Raiders punt. It's just gonna help in terms of field position. Tommy Petiti back to punt. Petiti gets a good punt off. Ron Newsom back for the presidents, takes it at his own 45 yard line. Gets across midfield and is brought down now. He's going to get up to the North Quincy High School 47-yard line, and that's where the presidents will take over. I'll tell you, hats off to number 87 for the Red Raiders, Curran Jorgensen. Uh, Curran is a sophomore. He snapped on that play, and then he was the first guy to get downfield on the coverage. Usually the center, if he's an athlete, he's going to have a clear seam to get downfield on the punch, John. And that time, uh, Jorgensen for North Quincy did exactly that after getting a nice snap to Petiti. So, good job by the Red Raiders special teams again. Quincy starts again inside Red Raider territory at the 47. High formation behind Peterson. The pitch goes down to Caesar over the right side, cuts back up in. And he's going to get tackled at the line of scrimmage. No gain for Caesar and the Presidents. Tell you, a great battle on the outside there. Uh, Number 11, Kyle McKay, trying to make certain that Caesar got turned up inside. He was successful there. I missed the number of the president who was blocking him, but it's very physical here in the first quarter, John. A fast-moving first quarter because both teams have been running. You see the clock ticking down under 30 seconds. This could be the last play. And uh, Although it's been fast moving from our perspective, it's been a physical first quarter. Play action fake, Peterson back to pass, fires, and it is complete. And let's see, it goes to number 23 for the presence, Jordan Cardosa. He's gonna pick up the first down, and he gets knocked out of bounds to stop the clock. They're gonna mark him out at the 32. Cardosa was wide open there. He found a nice little spot out in the flat behind the linebackers. That was a well-designed play. Coach Reardon and the Quincy offense, they do an excellent job of uh, play design, getting receivers to spots where they can get open. Uh, that was one of the strengths Jack McNell had. Now I'm really dating myself back when he was the coach at Boston College. He had this uh, very creative offensive mind where he could get, you know, he had plays designed where guys would be wide open. Well. We've seen that from Quincy. They do a nice job of flooding zones, and you'll see one blue shirt wide open. In that particular case, it was Mr. Cardosa. Ball delivered on the numbers, and uh, the Presidents with their first passing play of success, and um, they're inside Red Raider territory. It's going to be a first and 10 from the 32. That was the actual last play of the first quarter. They said Cardosa got knocked down in bounds and then rolled out of bounds so the clock continued to roll so end of the first quarter we are scoreless here at the stadium see on your screen there coach Bill Radin talking to his team trying to get them going the presidents will take over on the North Quincy High 32 yard line to begin the second quarter while we have this timeout, I want to remind all of our viewers log on to Quincy Access TV's website at www.qatv.org 
for replay schedules of the 77th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the Quincy and North Quincy Red Raiders. Again, log on to the website, qatv.org, to find out when the replay will be on. Well, I'm sure it's going to be on a bit, right, John? It certainly will, Jim. We on, do tend to flood the airwaves. On Thanksgiving Day, it'll be on at 4 p.m., 8 p.m., and at midnight, and then on various times, Friday and Saturday as well. So you can log on to the website for exact times. First down, 10 presidents, first play of the second quarter. Beeson gives the handoff to Caesar, and he's going to be wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage. Coming in and making the first hit it look like for North Quincy was number 65, Colin Hayes. Yeah, Reggie's got to be careful with that football. The Red Raiders are really going at the ball. They're attacking it, trying to get another strip. And C's are really looking strong. Um, you know, as I mentioned, conditioning going to be a factor. He's only a sophomore. Um, and they're really leaning on him today in today's game. We're going to say a loss of one on that last play. Second down and 11 now. I'm sorry, you gain a one on that play. Second down and nine. Looked like initially he was, he was hit behind the line of scrimmage, was able to fall forward and pick up a gain of one on the play. Yeah, he's a powerful running back, John. It's going to be quite something to watch him the next few years. He's under center now. He's looking downfield, rolls out of the pocket, gets sacked by Brian Donahue at the 42 yard line. It's going to be an 11-yard loss for Quincy High. Big play there by Donahue. Yeah, it absolutely was. One of the things about Peterson that he gives you is Lance can roll to his left. Most quarterbacks like to roll to their right. And if you watch this replay, you're going to see Peterson going to his left. Now, he's going to stop and set his feet. And it's at the point where he's stopping to set his feet to throw the ball that Donahue gets him. Ryan just uh, ducked his head and put a real bull charge on it. Did not give up until he got a hold of uh, Peterson. So big loss for Quincy there. That sack cost them 10 yards. It's going to be a third and 19. So both offenses, John, continue to sputter a bit early on here. So I said, Jim, third and 19 now for the Presidents. And that goes to Newsom over to the left side, cuts back up inside. Nice gain there by Newsom. He's gonna get back to the original line of scrimmage, it looks like. Yeah, nice job by Quincy. Uh, I think what we saw there, they were taking it a little conservative. Again, both coaches knowing this is gonna be a tight game. They're playing for field position. And uh, Coach Ridden, rather than having a concern about a possibility of uh, another botch play, knocking them back toward the 50 or any fumble or anything, a nice conservative inside run, and now they're punting for field position. And they're trying to get a bounce, and it looks like they do, oh, Jim. Great job play. there. Number Kenny 22, Nguyen. Kenny Nguyen coming up. He gets it before it goes into the end zone, and it's going to be down at the one-yard line. I'll tell you something, a super, well, hold on, looks like they gave him a touchback. No, there's a flag down at the point of the punt. Quincy's clapping, it looks oh, like it's going to be against it. North Quincy. We'll go down to the field for the call. A personal foul. Uh -oh. So a personal foul, hands to the face against North. An automatic first going down. To 16. So an automatic first down for Quincy. So a huge penalty against North right there. Huge for a number of reasons, John. One, gives the ball back to the presidents. Two, they're in the red zone now. But more importantly, you know, one score isn't going to decide this game. But a problem the Red Raiders have had this season is discipline. And that was a... Uh, a personal foul on a play like that is a lack of discipline. Early in the game, uh, there's a breakdown by someone individually here, and um, that's a bad sign for the Red Raiders overall. The boys have to say discipline, and um, they did not on that play, and it's gonna cost the Red Raiders big. So 15-yard penalty, moves the ball up now to the North Quincy 16-yard line. Caesar with a handoff over the five-yard line, and drags two men all the way to the one-yard line. 
first and goal, Presidents. A little slow to get up there for the Red Raiders is uh, number 21, Paul Reamer. He's the safety, and uh, he took a little shot there making the tackle, so. First and goal for the Presidents. They're inside, what, the two? It looks like he had to spot the ball at the two yard line. Full house backfield now for the Quincy High Presidents. Neal, Caesar, and Nugent in the backfield. Pizza keeps it himself, and touchdown Quincy High. Great decision by Lance Peterson. He saw the little seam there, he took the snap, and just tucked himself in inside of his guard and to the left of the center. Got right in the end zone, and the Presidents draw first blood here with that touchdown at 6 0 Quincy. So a two yard touchdown run for Lance Peterson, as you said, keeping the option on the quarterback keeper. Goes right up the middle for the touchdown. Point after attempt now for Quincy High, number 54, Luke McDonough. Will attempt the point after. Good snap, good hole, kick is up. And it is no good, wide to the left. However, the presidents get on the board, Jim. Six nothing, Quincy High with 7.29 left to go in the second quarter. Yeah, nice job by the presidents. I'll tell you what, John. When they got the ball back on that penalty, they wasted no time making the Red Raiders pay dearly for it. So, good job by the presidents. Great leadership by Lance Peterson. And Reggie Caesar continues to be a story here on Thanksgiving Day, as has been the past with the presidents, a, a running back being the marquee guy. Uh, do you know how many yards Caesar picked up in the first half? Have you got that, John? I do not know. Okay. We dearly miss our one of our favorite Red Raider players, uh, the guy who he's now uh, is at number 51, no, number 50 for today's game, Martin Dunham. We dearly miss our statistician, but uh, Caesar has had an impressive first half. Going to be up around 50, 60 yards, and uh, a big touchdown, well, a big run, I should say, to precede the Peterson touchdown. So things have gone the way Coach Reardon would hope they have would in the first half, I'll say that much. And for Coach Connor and the Red Raiders, this possession becomes a big one. All right, Presidents getting ready to kick off, and they do. Mike Curran's going to field at his own 13-yard line. Has some space to the left side, and nice gain there by Mike Curran. Going to get up to the 34-yard line. Well, again, another nice run back by the Red Raiders. They're going to have decent field position. They got a punt run back well by, uh, that was by Morrison, wasn't it, the first one? Yes. And uh, now Mike Curran, their other special teams guy, on a nice kickback return, so kickoff return, I should say. And so now the Red Raiders with decent field position, and senior Mike Stanton and the Red Raiders have to make something happen here for North Quincy as the first half winds down. High formation for the Red Raiders. Stanton under center. Going to hand it off to Staley. And he's going to go up the middle. He's going to get a gain of one, maybe two yards on the play before he's brought down by Quincy High. Yeah, a little inside running. Trying to give the line an opportunity to establish themselves a bit out there. And uh, let's see if, I, I suspect we're gonna see Mr. Stanton air it out a bit on this series here. Assuming North has an opportunity to do so. They've had, was it, I think two first downs, but they've had a turnover. They really haven't got going offensively yet. Second down and seven for the Raiders. Staley with a handoff over now to the left tackle. And he's going to get another gain of about three, call it four on the play action. Nice job there by Terrence Staley. Put his head down, move forward, and gets tackled now at the 42-yard line. Bring up now a third down and two. Yeah, some very nice inside running by Staley. He followed A.J. Morph and Mike Benoit, two senior captains, and two guys who could really bang inside and did. So that was some powerful running there. Uh, as we said, Staley is a guy who can run inside or out. 
That time he followed Morph and Benoit inside. And North grinding away here, looking at a third and two. All right, big play here now for North Quincy. Third down and two, as you said. Staley with the carry. And he's going to have the first down and more. Nice job by Staley. He got hit right at the first down marker. He spun out and is able to get all the way up to the 50-yard line. Yeah, and uh, one of the things you see, and this is what the coach would have hoped for, is uh, a young man coming off the field for Quincy who looks a little uh, little bit worn out there. They're getting ground down there in the Quincy trenches because these guys go both ways. And uh, I think what's happening is North Quincy is sensing that. They're trying to stick with their running game and make some things happen inside, try to take advantage of this physicality that they're trying to establish offensively. Staley again with a carry, spins out, crosses the 45, and finally gets brought down there by Agugo at the 41-yard line. Another nice run by Terrence Staley, one of the captains of the Red Raiders squad, a gain of nine on first down. Yeah, we're going to take a look at a replay here, and you're going to see one of the things we're talking about. DJ Neal, number 44, guy who's been really solid all game. Watch this. He puts the hit on, but it's more of an arm tackle. Staley spun right out of that one and uh, picks up the first down. And then uh, another little how do you do for Neal is he got popped by number seven, Morrison, as well. So the Red Raiders trying to deliver a message here. And uh, they're staying with the running, staying with the grinding here. And they're trying to wear out the presidents, John, in this first half. Staying's going to keep the ball on a quarterback keeper. He lunges forward for the first down. Gets all the way up now to the Quincy High School 38-yard line. 436 left to go here in the first half. Raiders now in Quincy territory looking to drive and get a score of their own. Yeah, not only that, but there's a little more energy now in the white shirts. This is what they wanted to see. I think that uh, Coach Connor, if he had his druthers, would have seen this on the first possession of the Red Raiders. Staley with a handoff up to the right side now, across the 30. And the Raiders are moving the ball effectively now, Jim. Staley, another first down, up to the Quincy High School 26-yard line. Yeah, and they're rotating people in and out. As we said, they're all fired up. If you watch this replay, just look at the guys out in front of Staley. There's Tommy Petiti blocking. Kyle McKay out in front blocking. Watch McKay, number 11, on the left of your screen. Look at that. And uh, look at number 68, A.J. Morph, the uh, left tackle out there as well. So they're all fired up now in the white shirts, John. All right, they're going to hand the ball off again to Terrence Staley. Goes over to the right side and going to get a gain of about four, maybe five yards on that play. Quincy High School has seen enough right now. They call a timeout. Great timeout by Quincy. The last guy to get up off that mess there of a pile was number 36, uh, Jimmy Nguyen. Um, he's a guy who, well, James Nguyen, I should say. I beg your pardon there, Mr. Nguyen, but um, he is a guy who was out on the field the whole game, a leader on the defense, and he, along with his 10 colleagues, are wearing down out there um, under this north attack. And uh, so a great timeout by the president. They're trying to give their guys a little uh, water break, let them catch their wind, and just refocus them a bit. Um, you see them on the sideline with their helmets off, regrouping, and they're going to come back out a little more fired up. We love James Nguyen because he's a, a Teddy Bruschi-type player, John. Not only can he get out there and get it done, but he's vocal and energetic, and he really leads his defense for the presidents. Second down and six for North Quincy, moving right to left, trying to score in the south, in the north end zone, excuse me. 3.44 left to go here in the second quarter. Ball at the President's 23 yard line. North has been moving the ball down the field, just drive started at their own 34 yard line. Again, now at the Quincy High 23. Eye formation behind Stanton. Staley with a carry, cuts out to the left side. And it's trying to be bragged down, cannot cuts back up in the middle. Another first down, another great run for Terrence Staley up to the Quincy 13 yard line. Great cut back by Staley. The old adage, if it, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, applies here. North Quincy is gonna employ a bit of the uh, Quincy strategy. If you watch this replay, it's just give the ball to the guy who's making the plays. Now watch this cut back. 
Again, an arm tackle that failed. That was James Nguyen holding on for dear life. He got dragged about four yards there. Staley to the right side. And this time the presence finally bring him down. Going to get a gain of two. Actually called three on the play up to the 10 yard line. North can still get a first down if they get to the three yard line. Yeah, it's an interesting picking up a uh, first down inside the 15, but outside the 10 is one of the worst spots you want to be, really. It makes it very difficult. Uh, but little uh, Staley left, Staley right. That time it was the right side inside the tackle. And he got stood up and tackled after a two yard gain, so. Second down and eight, Staley to the right side again. And he is met by a number of presents, but he will not go down, Jim. You can see how many presidents are taking him down. One, two, three, four presidents finally take down Terrence Staley. Yeah, James Nguyen and DJ Neal were the two key guys. They wrapped him up early. So They're going to say the ball is at the nine-yard line. Actually, make it the eight-yard line. And North Quincy is going to call a timeout now. Coach Jim Connor stops the clock. 2.16 left to go in the half. Yeah, Connor's a little bit about, a little upset about something. He's on the linesman, and we don't normally see that from Coach Connor. Uh, Kenny McPhee, the veteran assistant, you're going to see him come into the screen from the right there, uh, from the left rather. Uh, he gets down to say something to the official as well. But um, Red Raiders are looking at a big third down. They uh, can pick up a first down with a gain of five. Uh, the end zone seven yards away, so this is a big play. For the Presidents, they come up with a stop here, John. That would be huge. They have uh, really taken it on the chin this drive, but they've stiffened up a bit inside the red zone, and uh, we'll see if they can't come up with a stop here. If they did, that would really give them the control of this first half, John. They've had a very solid first half, the Presidents, that is. They... Um, Played very solidly defensive, uh, and defensively and uh, took advantage of the one opening that was given either team in this half, that penalty, which gave the uh, Presidents the ball back. They wasted no time banging it into the end zone. So Red Raiders trying to respond with this drive, and this is a big, big third down play. As you mentioned, Jim, Quincy was forced to punt deep in North Quincy territory. They did punt. But on the punt, there was a personal foul against North Quincy. That gave the ball back to Quincy at the North 16-yard line. And two plays later, Lance Peterson punched it in for six points. And that's our score, 6-0. Quincy's 2-16 left to go. Staley with the carry and trying to fall forward. And Quincy stops him at the six-yard line. They'll be shy of the first down. I'll bring up now a fourth down and three. It looks like... What we're going to see is we're going to see the uh, we're going to see another timeout by the Red Raiders. Looked like they were going to go for it, John. I'm not sure. Early on, I think they have enough confidence in Staley's ability to pick up a three or four yard gain, but they also have the option. I saw Reamer coming back on the field, and we have not seen Mike Stanton throw the ball. Uh, well, we saw him throw it once this half, but. Michael is very precise in a, uh, a Brady-like fashion. He really delivers the ball on the numbers. And when you have a talent like that, this is the very type of spot you want to use it because uh, you're looking at a 12 to 15 yard pass when you, you, know, you net out the uh, distance along the sideline or whatever. And um, he's very capable of delivering the ball quickly and on the numbers with a guy like Reamer and then they've got some backs who can come out of the backfield and catch it. Uh, the Red Raiders have a lot of options offensively if they choose to go for it, and it looks like they will here. Good turnout here at the stadium, Jim, for the 77th Thanksgiving Day game between Quincy and North Quincy. A lot of people have been continuing to filter in as the game continues on. And as, as always, a big turnout on the south end zone where a lot of people congregate each year. A lot of red and black down in that south end zone, excuse me, the north end zone this year. Right now, great place for them as North is trying to score. Fourth down and three. North's going for it. Ball on their own six-yard line. Yeah, Duzian's a slot receiver. They're going to give it to him. Duzian coming to the right side, and he's going to be right at the first down marker. 
Looks like he may be shy. John Mercurio down the field. He's going to get us a shot of where the ball is spotted. And no need, actually. First down, Presidents. North Quincy could not punch the ball in for the touchdown or the first down. Well, with 1.47 to go now, the key for the Presidents is to avoid turnovers. Captain Lance Peterson, the quarterback, I'm sure the only directive he's getting from Coach Rin as he stands with him down on the sideline now is, listen, let's get to the locker room. It's all you need to do. Uh, presidents are going to have to, uh, with 1.47, I think North has, they have three timeouts left. Yeah, three timeouts left. So well, they can stop the clock then. So, so Quincy will need a first down. Presidents are going to take a 30-second timeout, refocus things here. I think they had trouble with the numbers again. And uh, Coach Reardon did not want to have a, uh, a penalty here. Ball's on the three, and I think they had too many guys out there again. And the penalty accrues when you break the huddle. So Reardon recognized that, got the player off the field. So actually, with 1.47 to go, North Quincy could potentially get the ball back here. So the Presidents do have a little bit of a task on their their hands here of trying to uh, move the ball a bit, run some clock, and see if they can't uh, get to the locker room and hold on to the 6 nothing lead. Quincy at their own three yard line, first down and 10. 147 left to go in the half. He's gonna keep it himself, fake the handoff, and is gonna roll out now and come back up across the five yard line, and up to the six it looks like. North calls a timeout quickly to stop the clock. Yeah, Petiti and Donahue were in on that stop. Play took eight seconds, there's 139 left. And uh, regrettably, we are well familiar with uh, a scenario where a team does not successfully run down a clock and turns the ball over to the other side, if you recall that Patriots-Colts game of a couple of weeks ago. So Red Raid is hoping to do something similar here. That play took eight seconds. Conservative call by the Presidents, John. Peterson just kept the ball in his hands, did a little bootleg. Smart play, they've got a little more room now if they choose to do a handoff. The problem with the handoff is that's gonna occur right down around the goal line. So that's why they're being conservative here. Looks like they're gonna say only a gain of one on that play. Looked like he had gotten across up to the six. They're gonna say he's only at the four yard line. Yeah, and both Quincy running backs are in the end zone as they line up. Hand off to Caesar, and this time, ball's loose. And they're gonna say he was down by contact before the ball came out. Yeah, that's a good call. That's a good call, that's absolutely the case. I don't know if we have a replay. Yeah, we're gonna watch the replay. North Quincy gets a quick timeout, so we have time for it. But if you watch the replay, we said the Red Raiders are going for the strip here. Caesar's hit, hit again. Oh, well, I don't know, Jim. That looks yeah. really close. On the replay, you see that nothing. Caesar's knees, neither one had touched the ground yet. So, good job. We're going to watch it again. Caesar is hitting a pile of players. That's where it uh, gets a little deceptive. I say his he knees come pile. down. Knee is not down. Ball is out. Ball is out. So, great job on the replay deck. That's Peter Doherty, correct? Uh, I believe uh, Bill Early's down on the replay, I believe. Really? All right, well then I will begrudgingly credit Bill Early. <laughs> well, great job by the replay crew there. Well, the Presidents catch a break there, Jim. Handoff goes to Caesar, getting over to the right side. And he's going to get up now to about... Oh, he might be close to the first down. Yeah, he's going to get right to the 14-yard line. The Raiders stop the clock either way. That's their final timeout. It's at the uh, 13. They're a yard short. They're going to have to punt the ball. So... Red Raiders with 118 left did what they wanted to do. They, uh, the three plays cost about 20 seconds on the clock. Was it 137 or 147? 47. All right, so about 30 seconds off the clock. Red Raiders have some time here. And they're gonna actually measure it, Jim, to double check that the North uh, Presidents did not get the first down. You can John see, Mercurio. yep, got a shot right there. Great shot by John Mercurio. Nice job, John. And you can see it is shy, about a half a yard shy of the first down. 
Nice job by John Mercurio and his able assistant, Anna Alcori. Good work down there. So we'll bring up fourth down and less than one to go. For Quincy High School, moving left to right now, deep in their own territory in the, in the north end zone of the field. 118 left to go here in the half. Quincy on top of North by a score of six to nothing. You know, John, we really do have a terrific crowd here. Sometimes as um, Grace Busher pans away to see the, uh, the far stands, it looks like they're not filled. But the North Quincy crowd, even though Quincy's the home team here, uh, the stands over on the Hancock side of the field are filled with folks from Quincy and North. And uh, as you said, both end zones are people rimming the field. Great turnout here. All right, Quincy's going to punt. Important special teams execution. Good snap. Great and punt. Just gets it away. Fielded by Kyle McKay. And he could go nowhere. Great coverage downfield by the Presidents. Kenny Nugent was down there for Quincy High School. You're right about that. Kenny Nugent. And also down there was uh, number 21 for the president, Josh Galindo. And uh, great coverage. But we got to give uh, credit to Kyle McKay there. Big credit. Kyle caught that in the air. And we saw a number of times this year when uh, guys did not catch punts and they took bounces. Well, that punt was ready to bounce big time. Um, Luke McDonough did a terrific job of delivering it. McKay spared his team at least 10 or 12 yards by fielding it in the air under pressure. Great job by Kyle. Well, takes over in the Quincy 45 yard line. Staying back to pass, he fires and it's complete. Finds Mike Morrison and importantly gets out of bounds. Flag thrown after the play as well. All right, now let's see what this is about. A lot of Quincy players are applauding down there. Mike Stanton comes away angry. And it looks like it's gonna go against North Quincy. We'll go down to the field for the call. We have an illegal block in the back. Still first down. All right, so it's gonna be a first down for the Raiders. Let's watch the replay here and see if we can see the play because the coaching staff very upset over this call. It was right in front of them. Stanton delivers a perfect ball outside. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a tough call. Absolutely yeah. a terrible call. Uh, North Quincy's number nine. Uh, we don't know who he Jesse Collins. I beg your pardon. That's right, Jesse, the guy I always miss. Collins with a little bit of a bump there. Uh, that's a tough call. Red Raider first down. Staying back to pass again. Fires way downfield looking for Paul Reamer. And it's complete! Oh, what a catch by Reber! And what a play by Stanton! There's a Quincy player down the field. And he's going to have to, they're going to, have to hustle off the field real quick. And Quincy's going to call a timeout. Well, I'll tell you what. Excellent job by the Red Raider offense. Not only did they execute the play, watch this replay. Stanton under pressure. You're going to see great pressure here. He's got two guys on him. He gets away. He sees Reamer, delivers the ball, and watch this catch by Reamer. What a play. He was covered tightly by Kenny Nguyen, but he made the reception. And then, most impressively, John, the Red Raiders got downfield and got set at the line, forcing Coach Rin to use a timeout there. And uh, that is what you want to see. That's a sign that the boys' heads are in the game, that they're playing disciplined football. Um, they got right up, they got set at the line, so the Red Raiders right back knocking on the door. They're at the eight, first and goal with 49 seconds to go here. 30 yard pass from Stanton to Reamer, as you said, first and goal at the eight. Hand off to Staley, over to the left side, cross the five, and touchdown, North Quincy. I'll tell you what. He took quite a pop there by Gozia Gugwo right as he hit the end zone. Terrence Staley saw nothing but green grass, and then when he hit the end zone, Gugwo gave him a blast, John. But the Red Raiders with a big touchdown here as they head to the locker room. That's going to fire these guys up. A big lift for them. I know it comes out now for the extra point. 
Shea Aduzian will be doing the kicking duties for the Raiders today. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. So North Quincy comes down the field. They're able to hold the presence. They force him to punt. They come down, a big 30-yard pass, and it's finished off, an eight-yard touchdown run by Terrence Staley. North on top, seven to six. We'll take a look at their touchdown run now. Yeah, if you watch the replay, Staley's got a lot of room here as he goes out the left side. He knows he's going in at this point, but look at that pop by Agugwo. Staley gets up, he pats Agugwo on the helmet. He says, nice job, pal, but I did get in the end zone, and you like to see that type of thing, too. That was a great football hit by Agugwo, and they get up tapping each other's helmet. So good job by both athletes, Staley and Agugwo. And uh, the Red Raiders with a big lift as they head to the locker room. And let's not forget, North Quincy won the toss, and uh, Coach Connor looked to defer. Uh, philosophically, a couple of things there. He knows his guys are all excited, agitated, as they're uh, facing opening kickoff. He also knows that they're going to be a little nervous. So by deferring, he gave the offense a little bit of time to find itself, which it looks like the North Quincy Red Raiders may have here. And they will be taking the kickoff coming out of the locker room, John. Jane Nunzian is going to take it at the 27-yard line, crosses up to 35 now, still falling forward up to the 40-yard line. 13-yard run, 13-yard run, excuse me, by James Nunian. And the presence will take over on their own 40-yard line, going left to right with 31 seconds left to go in the first half. All right, well, Peterson is very capable. He's a terrific athlete, and he can throw the ball as well. So let's see what Coach Reed looks to do. We'll know on the first play whether it's going to be conservative, get to the locker room, or whether the president is going to try to make something happen here with 30 seconds to go, John. The presidents do have two timeouts left as well, so they have those to their advantage. Yeah, the way they've lined up, it looks like they're going to try to run something down this near sideline, John. Lance Peterson under the center, the quarterback for the Presidents. Pitches the ball, ball's loose on the ground. And Quincy does recover, great job there by Joe Spargo, the left guard for Quincy High School to come up and make that recovery, excuse me, the right guard. Yeah, if you watch the replay, and you gotta watch uh, Saf Eid. Watch 66 at 34. Well, that looks like a little hole down the outside. Watch the two guys. They were crawling all over each other. All right, Quincy's going to decide to let it run out. And the first half is over. A fantastic first half. North Quincy on top of the Presidents by a score of 7-6. to six. A late touchdown drive in the first half. They're coming down to get the ball back with 108 left to go on the Quincy High 45-yard line. They overcome a 10-yard penalty. A big 30-yard pass from Mike Stanton to Paul Reamer sets up an 8-yard touchdown run by Terrence Staley. And after the point after, North on top by a score of 7-6. to six. Well, Jim, you and I will take a quick timeout. Again, 7-6, to six, the Raiders on top of the Presidents. We'll be back with second half coverage of the 77th annual Thanksgiving Day football game here at the stadium in a moment. Welcome back, everyone. We're at the half. North Quincy Red Raiders lead the Quincy Presidents by a score of 7-6 to six here at the 77th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the two schools. At halftime, they announced the homecoming kings and queens from each high school, and we're going to bring up a graphic right now that has the names of each of those individuals. Brought them out onto the field, and they were introduced here at the stadium for, for Quincy High School. The homecoming king, king excuse me, was Kevin Keith, and the homecoming queen was Stephanie Anisi. For North Quincy High School, the king was A.J. Morf, and the homecoming queen was Maria DiPietro. So congratulations to those four individuals. Yeah, Maria was uh, one of the captains of the North Quincy girls soccer team. She is a terrific kid. I don't know the other three involved, the other three individuals, but great honor for the kids. But I do know Maria. She was a... Uh, Oh, well, yeah, we know Mr. Morphy. He's out on the field there. He looked very handsome in his uniform, <laughs> didn't he, John? I beg your pardon. But Maria was uh, quite a leader. It's interesting when the, uh, the kids are sports and they're honored by their classmates as uh, king and queen like that. But A.J. Morph with 
shoulder pads and game day uniform. You love to see that as well. So congratulations to both schools and uh, their respective kings and queens. All right, at the beginning of the game, at the coin toss, North Quincy won the toss, Jim, and they deferred to the second half. So they're going to receive here to begin the second half, and momentum's on their side right now, coming off that big touchdown by Terrence Staley, and North's going to get their ball right back. Quincy's defense needs to step up and get a 3-0, and ideally. Right, from the Quincy perspective, I'm sure that was the focus in the locker room. Uh, North Quincy found its running game a bit, Terrence Staley, Banging it out there, had some nice gains. Uh, but also, another interesting factor, pardon me, was that Mike Stanton got got going there and uh, might see Mike air it out a little bit more in the second half, John. All right, again, so at the half, North 7, Quincy 6, getting ready for kickoff here to begin the third quarter. Quincy High School comes into this game with a 10-game winning streak against their crosstown rivals. North Quincy trying to put an end to that, trying to get their first win on Thanksgiving since fall of 1998. Kickoff is going to be fielded by North Quincy at their own 13-yard line. Paul Reamer takes it, crosses the 25, and finally gets brought down at about the 34-yard line. North Quincy going left to right to begin the second half. Not a bad spot to start from. They're outside their 30, which is where you'd like to be ideally. So they're going to have some nice field position for the Red Raider offense to start. And as you said, John, President defense somewhat beleaguered as they ended the second quarter. They were getting beaten up a bit, really physically challenged. Uh, they stepped up, made some stops, but then North broke through there in the final 130 for a big touchdown. And I'm sure North wants to come out and uh, start where they left off. First and 10 for the Raiders at the 34-yard line. Terrence Sealy gets a handoff, and he runs immediately into James Nguyen. Going to pick up a gain of one on the play. Yeah, Nguyen got down and wrapped up the legs. He grabbed Staley's legs, wrapped him up. Staley stopped right at the line, as you said. So great job by Nguyen. He's energized again. So little break in the locker room. Big help for James. Gain of one on the play. Ball up now to the North Quincy 35-yard line. Eye formation behind quarterback Mike Stanton. Gives it to Staley over to the right side. And it's going to get a gain of about five yards on the play. Nozio Aguo coming up from his safety position to make the tackle. Also Kevin Rhodes up there to help him out. Going to bring up a third and about four. Long enough to be challenging. Um... We haven't seen Stanton unleash yet, and I, I keep waiting for that to happen here in this game. Um, as I said, Michael can really deliver a ball on the numbers, John. He's a good kind of control possession type quarterback, and uh, when you have a guy who can do that, that's a real option. Red Raiders are going to split out. They have a uh, wide out and a split receiver, but the give is to Staley right up the middle, and he's going to get the first down and more. He gets across the 50-yard line into Quincy territory up to the 45-yard line, and he had literally had a man on his back to bring him down. First down, North Quincy. If you watch this replay, watch Staley's legs, folks, once he gets hit. He's hit here and wrapped up. Now he drives, drives, drives. He keeps going. He's hit again. Keeps driving the legs. Look at him there. That's a great individual effort by Terrence Staley. 15-yard gain. Raider first down, John. We saw Mike Stanton a little bit of a glimpse of how he can pass in the first half, Jim. North Quincy had a 10-yard holding penalty. It looked like they had a first down. It brought him back 10 yards. Very next play after the hold, North goes 30 yards downfield to Paul Reamer to set up their first touchdown. So a glimpse of what Mike Stanton can do for this North Quincy squad. First down and 10, North Quincy at the Quincy 45-yard line. Staley with the Harry over to the right side and gets up now to the 30, let's see where they mark him down, the 35-yard line. Picks up another first down for North Quincy. I got to tell you something, John. That time there was a hole over on the right side that I could have run through. We saw number 44, Brian Donahue out there. Number 75, Mike Benoit. Um, some great blocking at the point of attack by the Red Raiders. They opened up a huge hole for Staley, and boy, did he hit it. 
So first down now for North Quincy at the President's 35-yard line. 8.20 left to go in the third quarter. Shea Aduzzi now with the carry. And he's going to get up to the 30-yard line before he's brought down by Luke McDonough. You know, an interesting adjustment here in the second half. We're joined in the booth by Betty Campbell, our the executive director and the leader at QATV. Happy Thanksgiving, Betty. But a uh, little adjustment here, John. They've got Brian Donahue, number 44, in there playing left guard for the... Uh, no, hold on a minute. I'm trying to look at the huddle here, but I've seen Donahue now twice, and I believe... Uh, no, that's number 54. I'm sorry. It's Jared Martin. But Donahue has been in the hole twice now, blocking for the Red Raiders. Staley with a carry up the middle. And steadily moving the ball upfield into Quincy territory. Going to get up to about the 26-yard line. Actually make it the 27-yard line. Third down and two for the Raiders. Donahue's doing it from a tight end position. That's what he's doing. He's lining up outside of Benoit. And at the left guard position, it's now Owen Kilcullen. They're rotating players around a little bit at the line, John. Uh, Benoit has been in there at right tackle. Um, Greg McDouglas is the center. And the Red Raiders are just winning at the point of attack right here on this drive, John. Third and two. Stanton's going to keep it himself. And he reaches forward, and he might have done, got a first down with that. Need to get to the 25-yard line. We'll see where they spot the ball. Yeah, the line judge who makes the spot is spotting it right there. I believe it's enough for first down. All right, it's going to be an official timeout. They're going to ask for a measurement. Well, based on that spot, I don't even think they need one. He's clearly at the yard marker, and the chain's clearly short of it. So, Getting him up, getting him up, getting up off the bottom pile. Excuse me, number 58, Akeem Hayward, limping off the field for the president's. He's been a big presence for Quincy High so far here today. Yeah, but he's been awfully banged up. He's taken some shots on his legs, John Akeem. There's the uh, Mercurio, Kim. And first down, North Quincy by the length of the football. Now, another great job by John and Anna. And uh, if you watch yeah. the replay, watch Stanton reach out at the end to get this first down. He's down there. Interesting spot. So his hand was down, but uh, they yeah. reach forward with the ball. They give him the first down. Red Raiders may have caught a break back there after maybe missing one or two in the first half. Got another official timeout here. Or what's going on here? Yeah, I think they're calling oh, for the they trainer. Oh, they the trainer across the field. That's what they're doing. Okay, good job. Yeah, we were talking a moment ago about number 58 for the president, Akeem Haywood. He has taken some shots on his left leg. Um, he was gesturing either to his calf area, which is possibly cramping, and hopefully that, or it's his ankle. But um, the trainer's going to go to work on him. We'll be able to get a look at that. He's got his shoe off, so. Looks like they're going to try to retape up his left ankle a little bit tighter there. Yeah, let's hope he's okay. You know, for two reasons. One, the boy's been working hard. You want him to be okay. But two, he's been a key guy for the uh, the presidents here in this first half. All right, first down and 10 for North Quincy at the 25-yard line. Staley again with a carry over to the right side, across the 20, 15, up to the 10, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. North Quincy takes another lead, six points. And Terrence Staley, his second touchdown on the day. Oh, a great run by Staley, and once he got outside, the only guy with a shot at him was uh, number 10, Kevin Rhodes. But I'll tell you what, Staley, as we said, he's an explosive running back. And Rhodes was a little upset there, but he really, although he was out there, he did not have a clean shot at Staley because once Staley gets outside, you're just not going to catch that young man. So great individual effort by Staley. Here comes the point after. It is going to be... Looks like it was partially blocked, maybe, Jim. And it'll be no good. We got another president down on the field, injured. And uh, again, you don't want to see that. Fortuitously, it looks like they're looking over a cramping situation uh, for Akeem. The uh, trainer has to leave him now and get out to check the young man down on the field. It's uh, Kenny Nguyen. 
And if Kenny Nguyen stays down, you know that he's hurt, and he's trying to walk off now with the trainer. He is one tough player and a guy we really love. He looks like he's going to shake it off on his own. He's coming off with Coach Ridden and the uh, Quincy Public Schools trainer. So Kenny's a tough guy, John. Well, that being said, Jim, North Quincy takes a seven-point lead, 13-6. to six. We'll see if the missed extra point comes back. Each team now has missed an extra point. Quincy, as you see, 13-6, to six, uh, missed the extra point on their attempt. And Aduzzi and missed the extra point on that last kick right there. So 13-6 to six North Quincy, 6-16 six left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, Shea is a more traditional kicker. He kicks the ball head on. He's not a soccer style type. Although our younger viewers have no idea what I'm talking about here because <laughs> the so-called soccer style is just how it's kicked today. But. Uh, Doozy and Squibb kick up the middle. James Nguyen takes it at his own 28-yard line. And he's going to get brought down at about the 38. They're going to make it the 39, actually. So that's where the presence will take over in their own 39-yard line. I'll tell you, it's been a little more hitting out there than what we've seen from uh, both teams, actually, at the end of the season. Both teams doing a pretty good job of banging out there. It's been a very physical game. I mentioned in the first half that as we get to the uh, the late part of the third quarter, we're going to see a lot about team conditioning. Uh, the little glow, the buzz you have coming out of the locker room at halftime is gone. That long drive by the Red Raiders is going to serve to settle both teams down. Now this is going to be a conditioning and discipline exercise as we head into the fourth quarter. And off to Reggie Caesar up the middle. Jumps over one man and finally brought down at the 45-yard line. Nice game there by number three, the sophomore for the Presidents, Reggie Caesar. Yeah, the guy he jumped over is a guy we talked about during the drive a moment ago, uh, Brian Donahue. Donahue is up there in the line, very gritty offensive uh, blocker there on the drive, and now he's playing the inside linebacker spot, and he was the first guy to get in on Caesar there, so... Brian Donahue getting down and dirty for the Red Raiders, John. Second down and three for the present. Caesar with the ball again. He'll pick up the first down and gets up to midfield. So another nice game by the Presidents. And they're going to move the chains for the first down at the 50-yard line. Yeah, the President offensive line trying to step up and answer back here. Reggie Caesar as well from the backfield. Uh, number 65, Bob Kozlowski. Uh playing left tackle there. And let me get the uh, number for the left guard. I believe it's number it's number 53, uh, Mike Fang. Um, that time, Caesar ran up behind those two for a nice gain. First down and 10 presidents. So again, at midfield, Caesar with a carry. Flag thrown on the play. Caesar got back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like it might be an offside against North. You know, I'm wrong. It, uh, the left guard is Brian McDonald, number 63. So uh, McDonald and Kozlowski doing some nice blocking for the presidents on the left side. They're trying to run behind them this drive. We have encroachment on the defense. Declined. We have a non-contact, unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. Automatic first down. Well, well interesting call what. there. Yeah, that's the uh, second time they've picked up a discipline penalty that's been a big one. And the Red Raiders just cannot afford penalties like that, period. But they're picking them up, picking them up at key junctures, John. The first time they picked up a penalty of that nature, it was when they had uh, regained possession on a punt, and here they come up with a nice little stop, but due to a lack of discipline, the presidents are now at the 35 of North Quincy and on the march. First and 10, Peterson back to pass, fires, and it is caught there by Quincy High. Number 23, Jordan Cardoza had to go down to the knee to make the catch. And yeah, Cardoza got out in the flat again. Coach Reardon likes to flood his zone with guys 
And uh, that time Peterson took the, he grabbed the middle receiver. There was a deep receiver who took Paul Reamer out of the play. There was a short guy who took the linebacker out. And in that little scene between the linebacker and the defensive back uh, was Cardoza. He made the catch. He had to get out of one knee when he made the reception. That's why the uh, official stopped him there and called him down. So brings up a second and four. Pitch to Caesar over to the left side, trying to get out. He does up to 25 at the 20 and pushed out of bounds there by Mike Morrison. First down, President's at the 20-yard line. Yeah, that time they, the Red Raiders failed to get outside and contain. Kyle McKay talking to the official. He's a little frustrated. I don't know if we have a, um, a replay on that one, but I, I, we have seen some grabbing and some pulling here. It's just very aggressive play out there. If you watch this replay, look for number 11, the white shirt. Let's see what he's uh, griping about. As we get outside here, Caesar's getting outside. There it is. McKay trying to get outside. He gets held up nicely by Cardoso blocking. I think he felt that when Cardoso was letting him go there, at some point they do have to... Uh... Newsom oh. on the carry, and he is hit immediately Richardson. and hard by Trevor Richardson. No gain on the play. Red Raiders need a little more of that. I was going to say, at a certain point there on the block, John, um, the blocker has to disengage, and as McKay felt he was getting away from that block, he felt he was grabbed a little longer. But President is doing a nice job of blocking at the point of attack on this drive, and um, Caesar taking full advantage for the Presidents. Second down and 10 for Quincy High. Ball at the North Quincy 18-yard line. Newsom with a carry, and he's going to get back to line scrimmage again. He was pushed inside there. And Trevor Richardson comes up with a tackle again. Yeah, great job by the Red Raider defense of turning him up inside. And then Richardson worked his way down the line and wrapped up the running back. So North Quincy looking to come up with a stop here. It's third and 11. This is potentially four down territory, John. So it's important for the Red Raiders to come up with a stop here um, that does not allow Quincy to pick up five or six yards because I'm sure Quincy would go for it if they can. On the other side of the ball from the Quincy perspective, they're looking to get the ball inside the 15 yard line at the least on this play and I'm sure they would go for it on fourth down. Third down and 11, loss of two on that last play. Akeem Haven has checked back in for Quincy High. Peace looking to pass, looking down the field. It's going to be picked off in the end zone by Mike Morrison. Morrison now coming up to the 10 yard line, has some more space up to the 20. Up to the 30-yard line, cuts back up into the middle of the field, and brought down at the 40-yard line. Looks like the wrong route was run by Quincy High, and Mike Morrison picks up a flag thrown after the play as well. We might have another 15 yards tacked onto this run gym at the end of the play. Yeah, we'll have to see. I don't know who the call's going to go against. Yeah, we'll see on that one, but uh, I'll tell you what. Personal foul on blue. First down. You called it when you said that uh, a Quincy receiver broke off a patent uh, because Lance Peterson was sending the ball to the corner of the end zone, and the only guy there was uh, number seven, Mike Morrison. Now, he could have taken a knee there, but he chose to run it out. And uh, what a great decision that turns out to be. He ran it back a little over 40 yards. You tack on the personal foul, and now the Red Raiders are in great position as opposed to their defense on the field in the red zone. They are now first and 10 from the Quincy 45, and the Presidents need to come up with a stop here. A huge shift in momentum coming out of the locker room. North Quincy got in and scored as they hoped to. They lead 13 to six and they now have the ball. First and 10 from the 45. North Quincy moving left to right. They're gonna hand the ball off to Terrence Stale. He goes up the middle, following his lead blockers. He's still going. Great job by North Quincy on the block. And Staley's gonna get inside the 40, up to the, let's see where they spot him, at the 38 yard line. Nice job by the Red Raiders. That was inside the guards there. That's just grinded out stuff. Coach Connor is an old school guy, played football for Boston College, a program some of you may be familiar with. It's Division I, it's elite football. 
And uh, Jim Connor knows this game, knows it well, and he's trying to establish some old school grinded out stuff here at North Quincy. He's giving the ball to Staley, running it inside. Up the middle, Jim's got to break free now. One man to beat, Nosey Agugo trying to get him. And touchdown, North Quincy! Terrence Staley, a 38 yard touchdown run. 19 to six with a point after the come. I'll tell you what, the guys who are down there all fired up. Number 68, A.J. Moore, if you would have thought he was the guy who carried the ball into the end zone, he is all fired up because he's one of the five guys who opened up a gaping hole in the line. Staley exploded through it. What a run by Terrence Staley. And then he carried, was it number 24 for Quincy, Agugwo, into the end zone. So that is a big run for the Red Raiders. Big turn of events here. 35 seconds ago on the game clock, North Quincy had its back to the wall in the end zone, defending. They have now scored. They're going for two. And a big shift in momentum for the Red Raiders. All right, North Quincy was initially going to go for two, but they had to call a timeout. They didn't have enough men on the field. And it looked like they might get a call for an illegal substitution. Well, let me take a look at the replay of Terrence Staley's 38-yard touchdown run. Yeah, if you watch this replay, look at that. This guy is running up inside his left guard. And look at that hole. Here comes Agugwo. He's going to hit him at about the five. But Terrence could not be stopped. Gets into the end zone. And a uh, big touchdown for the Red Raiders. So... They are all fired up over on the far sideline. But what I like here is Coach Reardon walking up and down his sideline, working his players, keeping their heads in this game. Staley with a two-point conversion attempt, and he gets in. Ran over to the right side on the right tackle. Hit a man at the one-yard line and punched it in. So North Quincy comes back down the field, a 21-6 lead with 1.13 left to go in the third quarter. Well, big change in momentum, and the Red Raiders are all fired up. But I'll tell you what, they've got to be ready for these presidents because we've seen this before, John, where North has taken a pair of control on Thanksgiving Day. But pre the presidents, a team that can really hang around and hurt you, they're ready to go down there. Their special teams has uh, got a nice shot from our sideline camera, John Mercurio, as they take the field. And the president's getting ready. They're going to send... Uh, number 24 back to take the kick, Agugwo, the captain, and he'll be joined back there by Reggie Caesar. Thus far, North has chosen to kick away from those two guys. Again, Coach Connor plays conservative old school football, and uh, he's using that squib kick. One of the things we may look to see at some point is whether Coach Reardon doesn't switch up and slide uh, these two guys up to uh, the blocking you know, have them shift with uh, James Nguyen at some point. Another good squib. Gets through the legs here. It's going to be picked up by Caesar. Reggie Caesar's nice job just to jump on. It went through the legs of DJ Neal. Well, everything's going the Red Raiders' way now. A Doosian with a nice squib kick that cut through all the blockers. Presidents are going to start with uh, their worst field position off a kick at the 22. And uh, let's see what Lance Peterson can do to uh, regroup the troops here for the Presidents. So ball spotted at the Quincy High 22-yard line. That's where the Presidents will take over. Again, 108 left to go here in the third quarter. Quincy comes out, two receivers to the right, a quarterback, Lance Peterson. Nosey Google goes wide to the right, and Jordan Cardoza in the slot to the right. Pitch goes to Caesar over to the right side, cuts back up in, trying to get outside, and is brought down there by Brian Donahue. Nice tackle to save five yards. I'll tell you what, Brian Donahue has had a very rough senior season. He came out, uh, he injured his leg early in the season, missed a couple of games. Then we saw him in the Malden game when he was taken from the field with a dislocated shoulder. Really tough injury. But Brian Donahue and Terrence Staley have been the men today for the Red Raiders. Staley, we've seen, he's a marquee guy running the ball, but Donahue has been doing all the dirty work and excelling at it for the Red Raiders. 
there you saw him chase down Reggie Caesar with a great individual tackle, John. Second down and four for Quincy High. He's gonna keep it himself. And he might have the first down, and he does. Great job by Lance Peterson. Yeah, very, very alert play by Peterson. One of the reasons you gotta love this kid, he's a terrific athlete. He's like another coach on the field, John. That time, uh, the I, I was just talking about Donahue, the inside linebacker. He was keying on um, Caesar. The clock just ran out. The teams are going to shift ends of the field. Uh, Peter, uh, rather, Donahue was keying on Caesar, and Caesar was running wide like he was going to take a pitch. Peterson saw that. He saw Donahue moving away, so he just took the snap. He had all kinds of room. Tucked up inside his guard, picked up the first down. Lance Peterson doing a great job of showing poise here, trying to lead the troops back. They're down 21 to six, but that's just two touchdowns. And the way this game has been played thus far, if North Quincy can score here, they're right back in it, John. So as you said, 21 to six at the end of three quarters of play. North Quincy, 11 minutes away from the first win on Thanksgiving Day in 10 years. Their last win, Jim, came in 1998 when they won by this exact same score, 21 to 6. Yeah, and how much you enjoy talking about that, John? <laughs> you too. Again, we want to remind all of our viewers, log on to Quincy Access TV's website at www.qatv.org to find out when this game will be replayed on QATV Channel 8, qatv.org. My first play of the fourth quarter, First down and 10 for the Presence. Ball on their own 34-yard line. Caesar with a carry over to the left side. Going to get up to about the 38-yard line before he's brought down by North. Yeah, nice tackle there by Kyle McKay. Get in on the legs of Caesar and took him out. So good job by McKay. Um, thus far, John, Reggie Caesar has not worn down at all. You've got to give the young man credit. President's really leaning on him today, and he is coming through. You know, John, it's interesting. You mentioned that 98 game. If it were not for that 1998 game, you'd be talking about 15 straight for the uh, president. So Ball loose oh. on the ground, and it looks like North might have recovered, Jim. Uh, Peterson Actually, fought back and got it. Let's see what the call is. Still no signal. Both teams think they have it, but North Quincy has the ball. Coach Bill Reed is not happy with that call at all. He's out on the field. The official signal, North ball. Yeah, I did not see who picked it up. Did you see what number got it? I was... Uh... I did not, no. I just saw... I, I initially saw Peterson have the ball. It looked like the North Quincy player jumped on the ball, but it came loose underneath him. Well, what he did, yeah, he jumped on it and he grabbed it, and the official may have blown the whistle. This may have been a quick whistle like that Caesar fumble. If you watch the replay, there's the fumble. It's a body right on it. You're right. He jumped right on it. Now watch as uh, Lance gets underneath there, and he's going to pull the ball away. He pulls it out there, and he's got it. So may have been a quick whistle. But uh, this one could prove to be more costly than the earlier one. Staley with a carry over to the right side. Almost broke free, Jim. Ball's loose on the ground. But they're going to say he was down by contact before it came loose. Staley had one man to beat in the hole. He just got tripped up. Otherwise, we might have been seeing another touchdown by Terrence Staley. I'll tell you, we're seeing a replay of what we've seen before at Thanksgiving Day. Only this time it's the Red Raiders administering the punishment. Nothing subtle whatsoever here. Red Raiders are just climbing on the backs of senior Mike Benoit and senior Owen Kilcullen, and they're giving the ball to Staley, just banging away on the right side. They've got a tight end, Bryant Donahue out there, and look at these runs by Staley. He is just slashing down the field, 8, 10, 12 yards in a run, and what they've done, John, They've got the right guard, Owen Kilcullen, the right tackle, Benoit, and then outside of him, they've got number 44, Brian Donahue, and they are just trying to stuff it right at the president's. You mentioned at the top of the telecast, Jim, that 
in each of the past couple of Thanksgivings, there's been a big running back that has come out and had a great game. For the past two years, it's been for Quincy High School. However, for this year, it's been North Quincy High School's Terrence Staley, and he has them in the Quincy red zone, first down and 10 at the 19-yard line. Staley with a carry again over to the right side, and he gets tripped up there by James Nguyen. Gonna be a gain of one on the play. 8.55 left to go in the fourth quarter. They do spot the ball at the 18 yard line. So ball inside the red zone of Quincy High. North trying to tack on another seven points with this drive. Yeah, I'll tell you what, John. Um this is really something, an unexpected turn of events here. Staley to the left side, still on his feet, and ball's loose on the ground now, and Quincy has recovered. Nosy Agrugo fell right on the ball, and just as you say, a turn of events, Jim, bang, another turn of events, North fumble, and Quincy recovers. Well, that's what I was talking about. I, this is not a team, meaning the presidents who let the floodgates open on Thanksgiving Day, and it was just surprising to see what was happening. So, great strip there. Presidents have a second chance to try to get back in this ball game. And now this becomes a critical possession as the Red Raiders got to come up with a stop defensively. 8-12 left to go in the ball game. Quincy has the ball on their own 23-yard line. They were moving the ball down the field before the last fumble. See if they can do more of the same. Peterson fires and it is incomplete. Was looking in the flat for his fullback, DJ Neal. Yeah, Donahue was out there and so was McKay. They had the coverage. Um, one of the things that um, Coach Reardon has to look at now is the clock. There's eight minutes to go here. Quincy will not have the luxury of the type of uh, drive that they've been trying to execute today and did successfully in the first half, a long running drive. Um, they're down two touchdowns, two scores. We're probably going to see Lance go into the air a little more frequently here as the Presidents try to get back in this ball game. Second and ten for the Presidents. Peterson looking to pass, trying to set up the screen, but he's sacked in the backfield by number 64 for North Quincy, Owen Kilcullen. Another guy having a great game here on Thanksgiving Day. You gotta be happy for some of these seniors from North Quincy, because they are really stepping up. There's a nice picture in the Quincy Sun this week, John, of the senior class, uh, you know, the members of both teams, Quincy High and North Quincy. A lot of uh, good, talented young men, quality individuals, and you like to see those guys have a nice Thanksgiving day, because this is it for them in high school football. Several of the uh, North Quincy seniors really stepping up today, having special days as the Red Raiders look to pick up their first victory in a long time. Third and 18, they hand the ball off to Caesar, and he can go nowhere. That play could not get going wow. for the Presidents, and he's going to lose another three yards on that play. We'll bring up now a fourth and 21, and the Presidents will be forced yeah, to punt. Yeah, and the problem the Presidents have, they're so deep in their own territory, and they need so much here. As far as, uh, as you said, it's 21 yards. They've got to punt the ball away. They really needed to keep possession there, and they did not. So Red Raider defense comes up huge here, John. That was a big, big stop for them, and now the special teams has to execute. North will get good field position again with this punt. Mike Morrison stands back at the Quincy High School 45-yard line. Great punt. Good punt, and it goes off a Quincy player. And yep. went off the Quincy player at the 44-yard line. It goes all the way down to North 30-yard line, but I believe this will come back to the 44. Yeah, the ball will be down there. So the Red Raiders, as you said, are going to have great field position. So a tough break there for Quincy High School. Went off their player downfield covering the kick. And North Quincy will have it at the Quincy High 44-yard line to start this drive with 6.19 left to go in the game.
Well, an interesting turn of events here as the Red Raiders have really seized control of this game, Sean. With 6.19 to go, we're probably going to see the Raider running game here. They're going to try to run out the clock with Staley. And, Give the uh, ball to Staley over to the right side, but he is met immediately by three presidents, make it four. They're going to give him a gain of one on the play. Coach Reardon's got some decisions to make about how to use his timeouts here. Uh, he's calling one now. Um, Red Raiders are going to run the ball inside. They don't need to see the type of slashing 10 and 12 yard gains here, John, because what they want to see is 35, 40 seconds off the clock. That's it. They run down the clock a bit, and that hurts Quincy as much as any of those 12 or 15 yard runs. So um, Coach Reardon's going to have his hand forced. Options start to dry up for him as the clock runs down here. And um, one of the issues is that uh, they lose timeouts, they lose ability to control the clock when they do get the ball back. 6.04 left to go. And off to number two, Mike Curran. And he's going to get up to the 35 yard line and be a yard shy of the first down. Nice call by the Red Raiders. They're shifting it up a little bit. They gave the ball to the wing back that time. Rather than uh, giving it to the, the eye back, Staley, who's been running inside, they caught the wing back. He got outside a little bit. Nice run. He picked up about eight yards. So great call by the Red Raiders. Everything's going North Quincy's way right now, John. They've just had a great second half, and Bill Reardon's trying to come up with something to stem this flow. Third down and one for the Raiders at the Quincy High 35-yard line. Staley with a carry, and flag thrown on the play. Staley breaks for three, though, crossing the 20, 15, 10, 5, and touchdown. But this may be coming back, Jim. Let's see what the call is. And this is going to be coming back, Jim. It will be against North Quincy. They're holding on the offense. Repeat third down. 6-8, you. So 10-yard holding penalty against the Raiders. Well, it's a 10-yard holding penalty, but obviously it was much bigger than that. Going to cost them 45 yards and a touchdown, so... I don't know if we have a replay on this. Yeah, I believe we do. We can, if we take a look at it real quick, we'll take a look at it. Watch number 68. That's who they called it on. And I'll tell you what, I don't know. He got his hands. Typically, you tell your linemen that they have to keep their hands inside the shoulders of the guy they're blocking. That time, A.J. Morse's left hand was on the outside shoulder pad of the guy he was blocking, but he didn't grab the shirt or anything. That's, that's an interesting call. He's so strong that he, he moved the guy out too, and it was not consequential, meaning it didn't have an impact on the play. So interesting call there. Cost the Red Raiders big, but they're in a position where they can afford the luxury of taking a call like that on the chin. And um, they're still leading 21-6. President's forced to call another timeout. Got a guy in the field who's hurt, and he's their kicker, uh, an athlete they depend on, Luke McDonough. Uh, looks like he did something with either his left hand or his left arm. Not sure what happened there. Well, it was third down and 11. The ball went to the handoff, excuse me, with the Shea Doozian, and he got six yards on the carry, excuse me, five yards on the carry. So now up to the 41 yard line. Brings up now a fourth down and seven for North Quincy. Five minutes left to go in the ball game. Again, from the Red Raider perspective, they've got a lot of options here and they're in a good position because even if they have to punt the ball, they can pin Quincy back. From the Quincy perspective, they've got to hang tough here and continue to just try to make the next play. Uh, if they do that, there's still only two scores behind here. And if they can get a quick one, they're right back in this ball game. 
Stanley looking to bound the pass, has a man downfield, and it is incomplete. Was looking for Jesse Collins, number nine, but nice coverage down there by Kevin Rhodes, the Quincy defensive back. Turnover and downs, Quincy will take over now on their own 41. Yeah, I miss the fact that was fourth down. I'm sitting here. It's an interesting call from fourth down. I, I, uh, I'm talking about the fact that they can punt and pin the presidents back. Well, they went for it, and now the presidents have some great field position here. So first but down they need ten. A quick score, John. 4:52 to go on the clock. First and ten. Presidents are on their own 41. Peterson back to pass, looking downfield, and great pass to Jordan Cardoza. A great pass by Lance yeah. Peterson, went just over the hands of the defense, and Cardoza gets out of bounds to pick up the first down, gets all the way up to North Quincy 45-yard line. Yep, great pass. Great job by Cardoza of catching it in traffic. He took a big pop, and he got out of bounds and stopped the clock, so... This is what we're talking about for the president. Just make the next play. They're in Red Raider territory inside the 45. Try to make something happen here with 4.43 to go. He's looking to pass again, and it hits. Caesar with a carry and cannot get out of bounds. Gets up to the 40, excuse me, the 35 yard line. It'll be just shy of the first down. Clock continues to run. Yeah, that time Caesar, as you said, he didn't get out of bounds. He was over on the sideline. He saw some green space ahead of him, and he tried to make something happen. And North Quincy's going to call a timeout with 4.21 left to go in the ball game. Ball at the 36-yard line. Presidents have a second down and two to come back after the timeout. Yeah, this is a very, very key series here because I'll tell you what. If the president score, the whole complexion of this game changes dramatically. I was just talking about the fact that the Red Raiders had everything, everything going here for them in the second half. A little surprised by that fourth call, fourth down call, John. How about you? A little bit, yeah. You yeah. thought they may have, uh, well, trying to go for it and uh, put the nail in the coffin right there with that play. Three, three That's, touchdowns is yeah. probably a little bit too much to come back with under five minutes left to go, but. That's been in vogue this November, November of 2009. Coaches choose to go for it on fourth down, but um, the end result is that the presidents here have, the door is still open, however slightly, for them to get back in this ball game. Um, with 4.20 to go, they're at the uh, Red Raider 36 yard line. Raider defense has to come up here with a stop. President offense trying to break through here. Second down and two for the presence. Pitch goes to Caesar over to the right side. And he had the first down, Jim, but I don't know if they're going to give it to him now. He ran backwards, and he will not have the first down. He only picks up a yard on the play. He had the first down. He originally got up to about the 34-yard line, which would have been enough of the first down. Then he made a cut and ran back and loses yeah. yardage. Costly decision by the young man because of two, two impacts there. They would have stopped the clock to move the chains, and the presidents are ready to go. Here, the clock continue to run, and now the presidents have to get a first down to keep going. And Peterson inside. Jeez, this is going to be close. And they got a, I don't know if they got a really good spot on that, Jim. It looked like he had lunged forward enough for the first down. The line judge is coming out made a very conservative spot. It's going to require a measure. And uh, Bill Reardon a little unhappy because the officials were a little slow to call the clock there. Stop the clock, I should say. They were spotting the ball and had not stopped the clock yet. So Reardon a little unhappy with that. He initially called for a timeout as well. Let's see where the first down. They're going to be oh, wow. just shy of the first down, Jim. Great job by John Mercurio and Anner again. And timeout called by Quincy to stop the clock. I believe they have one timeout left to go. 3.30 left to go when Quincy High School is going to be about a foot shy of the first down. Fourth down and less than a yard to go. Well, here's your dilemma. You know, do you focus on Peterson and try to make the stop? Or... 
Do you not focus out of fear that if they pitch to Caesar or do something along those lines, that somebody in a blue shirt is going to get outside and really burn you? That's what Ken McPhee's talking about over on the far sideline. You see Bill Reardon in the Quincy huddle. Over on the far side, Kenny McPhee and Coach Connor talking to their guys about what they have to look for, what they have to do, and what to be careful for. Lance Peterson, on all the prior occasions where you've been looking at a scenario like this, Peterson's kept the ball and just slid forward. So one would think that would be where the focus is on the part of the inside linebackers for the Red Raiders. The problem that uh, the defensive backs have is that they got to be careful to watch for the big play. So here we go, John. Big play in this ball game. Fourth down, less than a yard. 21 to 6 Raiders with 3.30 to go. All right, ball at the 35 yard line. Quincy needs about a foot for the first down. Peterson under center. They pitch it to Caesar over to the right side. And nice stiff arm by Reggie Caesar to pick up the first down. And he gets out of bounds to move the chains. Yeah, Staley get over there, Rodham. So that's what we're talking about. It was Staley, Petiti, and Mike Morrison for the Red Raiders. They all get out there. They made the stop. Clock stops. Presidents pick up a big first down. But uh, things become all the more important here for the Presidents as time runs down. They've got three wide receivers to the left. Ball at the 32-yard line. First down and 10 for the Presidents. 3.24 left to go in the game. Peterson looking to pass. Hits Caesar in the flat. He's going to try to get out of bounds. And he does. And a young man who's working the chains for North Quincy, who's probably an aspiring football player. I should say high school football player, maybe playing in the youth league. But man, did he get wiped out. And uh, they're over there checking on him right away because he really took a hit. But he's right back up. And he's right back to work. Be nice to get a little zoom shot of that young man if we could. Nice job by Grace Busher. He's right back to work getting a high five from Ken McPhee. There he is. And um, here come the presidents. 3.13 to go. Peterson under center. Caesar in the backfield. Three receivers to the right of him. And they're gonna give it to James Union. Ball's on the ground. Oh, and North Quincy wow. has recovered. Coming up with a recovery was Owen Kilcullen. And that could seal the game, Jim. Great strip. And an alert job by Kilcullen. So Owen Kilcullen may have put the final nail in the North Quincy coffin. Let's see if we can see the replay who made the strip. And we'll have to rewind it a little bit more, but over there for North Quincy was number 75, Mike Benoit. Also, Trevor Richardson was over there. It looked like he might have gotten his hand in there. I, I can see who it is if you let the tape run forward. It was 75, Mike Benoit. So the two guys, they were, they've were they been uh, running behind. Benoit and Kilcullen come up with a big defensive stop there. Benoit with a strip, Kilcullen with a cover, and now the Red Raiders are back in the driver's seat here with a uh, 21 to six lead, three minutes to go, John. And uh, that, that was a critical turnover, it's interesting. The one thing that uh, Coach Ridden talked about all week was turnovers. He was concerned about turnovers. And um, as a result, um, we got you, we got you. We're not doing sure it. enough, it's a turnover that uh, hurt the presidents. Regrettable with three minutes to go. But here come the Red Raiders looking to run down the clock and bring this one home. All right, 306 left to go in the game. Shea Doozy with a carry, breaks free, cuts back up in the middle, across the 50 yard line at the 40, and is tripped up there. By number 22 for Quincy, Kenny Nguyen. But a doozy with a huge play on first down gets deep into Quincy territory. 
Yeah, big first out for the Red Raiders. That's the key. They don't need anything else on the board. Mike Stanton very smartly standing there. He's looking over to the sideline. He's watching the change get reset, waiting for the clock to start up, and now he's going to huddle up his boys. He wants to run down the clock a bit before the Red Raiders come to the line. 2.40 left to go now in the game. They shift the tight end Donnie over to the left side and they run left behind him. Mike Curran with a carry. And the guys say he got knocked down inbounds so the clock will continue to run. Interesting call there. Bill Reardon a little upset with it. He's down talking to the official and I believe he's absolutely, well, he's talking about something else, but. Looked like from my vantage point, he got knocked out of bounds before he came down, but. Yeah. So second down and five now. Red Raiders have the ball. Clock continues to tick down, and they're gonna call a timeout with 152 left to go in the ball game. Ball spotted on the Quincy High School 28 yard line. With 152 to go, Red Raiders looking at a second and five. Um, from the North Quincy perspective, this isn't a bad spot to be in. I think they have a sense now that they're gonna win this game, <laughs> absent something extraordinary. And it's nice for the young men on the field to really be able to save her this hard-earned victory over a tough, tough President's squad. Tell you what, John, the President's got beaten up a bit there in the end of the first half. They uh, had a tough third quarter when North Quincy really broke this game open, but they just kept hanging around and hanging around, and with 3.30 to go, they had a shot at making this a ball game here. Very interesting how, even though it's a 21-6 game, Interesting how tight this game was with 3.30 to go. The outcome still, still open. Aduzian with a carry, flag thrown on the play. Aduzian gets up to about the 25 yard line. So the clock is going to, what's that? Oh, the flag, I'm sorry. Look like it's going against North Quincy. We're waiting to sort out what's going on here. This has not been a crisp final two minutes. North had to call a timeout, notwithstanding the fact they're trying to run the clock out. The officials are all over the place here. It's against North. We have North. a legal procedure on the offense. Still second down. Fascinating performance by the line judge. He let a guy dive out of bounds and kept the clock running, and now he's calling a procedure call. I'm not sure what he saw there, but. Bill, I'm sorry. You could have third and well, two. We'll turn off the microphone there while they decide what's going on. The official was telling Bill Reardon, I know you don't want to see the clock run down anymore. Do you want to get it to third down? and not take the penalty, but Ridden was aware of that. And uh, I think Bill understands that he pushed every button he could, but it just wasn't there. And um, I, well, number 83 for the president took a real shot and he's coming off. It looks like he got hurt. Tom Paluzzi, a junior. He's, uh, he took a real shot in the rib cage. Coach Reardon going over to check on Paluzzi to see what's up. I hope he's okay. Got to find the trainer for him. But uh, I was going to say, John, it looks like Coach Reardon understands that uh, this game may be over. They just dumped a bucket on Coach Connor over on the far sideline. He got the Gatorade treatment. So he's gonna have an opportunity to enjoy things as well. They're stopping the clock to get the trainer across the field. I'll tell you what, this young man is really injured down on the sideline. He took a shot in the rib area. 
And uh, the amount of pain he's feeling, he could have a cracked rib. Coach Reardon standing right over him. They got the trainer over, and the game will resume now, now that we're all set on the sideline. Um, well, the officials are coming over to make sure he's okay. He is fairly close to the sideline, so they want to make sure he gets okay before they do resume the game, it looks like. Yeah, they have an ambulance over there, and if they need to get medical help right across, I think Jackie Ware is down on the sideline, and he uh, oversees things transportation issues inside the stadium. He mans the back gate, and if uh, if they need to do something to get uh, an ambulance over here, I think that may be what the officials are checking before they restart the game. Because they bring the ambulance right out on the field if they need to. So we're going to have to take a few minutes, and uh, as we said, from the North Quincy perspective, while we're concerned on this sideline, if you look over on the far sideline, there's a lot of smiling faces and a lot of happiness there because it looks like the hex is broken, John. I don't know as a Quincy High grad and a QA TV announcer whether you want to acknowledge it, but with 52 seconds to go, I think the, uh, the run for the presidents is finally over. Well, you say it's, the, been, uh, it's been quite a run. As you said, it's been uh, 10 in a row and 14 in the last 15 for the presidents. And, uh, last time North did win was in 1998 when they won by 21 to 6. And as you see in the score on the top of your screen, we have the exact same score this year as well. So we'll see if that is how the game ends. Trainer still attending to Tom Paluzzi down the field for Quincy High. 52 seconds left to go here in the game. Again, North on top, 21 to 6. Uh, yep. While we have this time, OG, I think we want to thank all the crew that has uh, come out here on Thanksgiving morning, taking some time out of their schedule when Certainly busy at home, getting ready for their own Thanksgiving meals and doing their own travel plans. On camera, John McCario, Grace Busher, Glenn Busher, and Tom Wilson. Also helping out John McCario down in the field was Anna El Torre. On audio, Frank Tanzi, who's back from school for this weekend and wanted to come back and help out with the game, so thanks to Frank. On graphics, Peter Doherty. On replay, Bill Early. Our technical director, Michael Jarvie. Our engineer, Chris Potter. Our director, George Capadonna and our executive director, Betty Campbell. Yeah, great job by all of them. There's a nice tack on the backfield, and I think we're gonna have one more snap, and then this game will be over. I want to especially thank Bill Early. I missed the pregame meal today. The crew went out for breakfast, I missed it, and I got word from uh, Mike Jarvie that Bill Early ate my three chocolate donuts <laughs> that they were holding for me. So Bill, thank you for stepping up and uh, filling in in my absence at the pregame meal. I appreciate that. Clock's going to tick down inside 10 seconds. Looks like we're not going to need another snap, John. This ball game is over. And look at the white shirts for the Red Raiders. They're jumping around. The hex is over. The class of 2010 for North Quincy has ended it. And uh, congratulations to the Red Raiders. Also, hats off to the Quincy presidents who played this game tough all the way to the end. As we said, with three minutes to go, the outcome was still left to be determined. And you really got to congratulate everybody for that. Well, as you see, final score, North Quincy 21, Quincy 6. The 77th annual Thanksgiving Day game will go to Red Raiders. Their first win in 10 years, Jim. So as you said, big win for North Quincy there. Very excited, you saw the players run out into the field and the fans erupted in cheer as the final seconds ticked off the clock. As you see the players down on the field congratulating each other. We have a camera down in the field, John Mercurios. We're gonna get ready for the trophy presentation of the city trophy. We have a microphone down there as well, Chris Potter ready to get going as the teams will congregate in their end zones. But fantastic victory, but more importantly, it was a fantastic ball game, as you said, with about three minutes and 30 seconds left to go. The outcome was still in doubt. North Quincy was able to put the game away with a fumble recovery. And the star of the game here today, Terrence Staley for North Quincy. Three touchdown runs, eight yards, 25 yards, and 38 yards. And as you said, Jim, past two years, the running back has been a star of the game for Quincy High School. This year, different school, but same story. Running back becomes a star of the game. Yeah, you got to give great credit to Terrence Staley, but I'll tell you what. We mentioned some other names, Brian Donahue, uh, Mike Benoit, Owen Kilcullen, 
Guys, they ran behind A.J. Morph as well. He was super. We're missing some other names, but uh, that's only because of the time factor. We're going to get out on the field here, but just a great effort. You've got to be very happy for the seniors for North Quincy High School. They did a terrific job. Hats off to the Quincy High seniors who led a very gutty team that was often on demand this season. Uh, they took some big hits today, but uh, watching the performance of Reggie Caesar, you got to be excited about uh, the president's future in football. So I think we're going to go down on the field. As you said, John Mercurio is right down in the middle of that scrum, and uh, a lot of happy faces. Do they have audio down there, or will it just be the... Uh, uh, there is an audio, so once they have the trophy presentation, we will pick up the audio. John Mercurio, a North Quincy grad in the middle of the action, so he's certainly excited, Jim. Yes, and uh, another guy, Quincy High Superintendent. There he is, Rick DeCristofaro. Right, we'll go down to the field the for the audio. There's Principal Earl Metzler as well with Coach Jim Connor. Here we go. Coaching staff, Principal Metzler, Jim Rendell. You know, congratulations, a lot of hard work. City champs, North Quincy High School Red Raiders. That's great stuff. They're really happy. And as you said, a long time coming, John. You do love to say that. Now, instead of 10 years in a row, it's going to be first win in 10 years. So. <laughs> and you're absolutely accurate with that. So, Well, either way, it's certainly a big win for North Quincy. You know, I'm sure it's a uh, big monkey off the back for all the fans down at the north end of the city, and especially Coach Jim Connor. As you see, Mike Stanton, the quarterback, running to the middle of the field. Yeah, he's earned it. He's earned that honor, absolutely. Mike Stanton this season was a terrific leader of this Red Raider squad. Your quarterback is the de facto leader, but Mike really stood up when some of the other seniors slumped in the middle of the season. Uh, he was a steady hand at the helm all year long, a great counterpart to Coach Connor, and you've got to really be happy for him and the rest of the Red Raiders. All right, Jim, well, a fantastic football season. It has been a uh, good year, a lot of good coverage, and a lot of good help, again, from all of our volunteers and members who come out each Friday night to the stadium. We've had a lot of rain this year. We had some cool nights. We had some nice nights in the beginning as well, but we want to thank all of them for your help. We're going to see their names at the end of the credits as well. So, again, final score here at the stadium, North Quincy 21, Quincy 6, North Quincy, a huge win on Thanksgiving Day. My name is John Caleri, and for Jim Timmons, we want to thank you for joining us here on the 77th edition of Thanksgiving Football. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone, from everyone at Quincy Access TV.